it will scare you. Happy Halloween. Why don't they run while they can still get away? Well, unlike some people, I'm not ashamed of my body. Mm. From a distance, I could hardly see your stretch marks. Hey, Eric, wave to Donna. She wants you to see your tits again. Forget it. Hi, Donna. Morning. What's the boogeyman? There's a dead dog up here. What do you think you're doing? Taking a break? Look, I'm leaking. Maybe the baby died. Maybe that's why the old lady was so weird. She never got over it. I got him, Sandy. It's okay. He's dead. Hi, I'm Spice Williams Crosby from Fatal Games, and you are listening to Hysteria Continues. Yes, welcome back to Hysteria Continues. Um, I think this is episode 25. I might be wrong, but um, we're almost at a quarter of a century, so we're either at it or we're very close to it. Um, and this time we are discussing 1982's um, Backwards Island Teen Monster Mash Slasher Scooby Doo style thing, which is humongous. Um, and I will welcome my fellow aficionados of big ones. Eric, how are you doing? Yes, I am humongous in many ways. Wow. So we've heard, Eric. So we've heard. <laughs> uh, and uh, Joseph, um, how are you? And to all the ladies out there, I'm humongous where it really counts. Wow. I heard you got a big nose. Um, yes, quite. <laughs> Nathan, how about you? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm homongous. Homongous. <laughs> Does that mean you're home or? Homo. Homo homongous. Okay. Right. Well, <laughs> um, as we have found out, as and I'm sure my fellow podcasters have found out, that when you search for humongous on Google, um, it comes up with all sorts of things, and none oh, yes. of them um, have anything to do with a 1982 film directed by Paul Lynch. So, so if you are searching for Humongous, um, maybe you do want to find certain things, but Humongous, there's every appendage you can imagine is out there. But we're not going to be talking about those. We are going to be talking about Humongous a little bit later. Um, we're going to talk about some recently seen, some films that we've um, watched recently, and also we're going to do top three, and this time we thought we'd have a look at our top three, our favourite, not necessarily the best, but our favourite slashers from the last ten years, or from the year 2000, um, which a lot of people possibly think has been quite a paltry time, and there's not been very much, but I think we've we've managed to uh, get some quite interesting choices, so we're going to get onto that um, in a little bit. Uh, before we do, um, yeah, well, let's talk a little bit about our recently seen. Uh, who wants to go first? How about you, Joseph? What have you been watching? Well, last night I watched uh, The Burning again, the uncut version from MGM. Hmm. And I liked it a little more than I usually do. I always found it to be too Meatballs esque, but I had a little, I had some fun with it last night. The, the special effects, as you know, are, you know, quite outstanding, and it really, you know, makes the film. But uh, it's it's kind of a crowd film, you know. You, you watch it with a crowd, and you kind of get into it a little more. So there's that. And then uh, I rewatched The Loved Ones, which the first time I saw it, I didn't really care for it. But uh, watching it with a crowd, uh, I have to say I enjoyed it a lot more. It's um, it's, like the Australian it's a little. One. I'm sorry. So like the Australian one, isn't it? Uh, yes, it's yes, the Australian yeah. film. It's a little, um, you know, a little long on the whole torture thing, but uh, it it kind of plays with that, you know, whole aesthetic a little bit, and it does something a little new with it. And the girl playing the uh, lead villain, she's like, you know, she's fantastic. But uh, I, I quite like that. And then I watched uh, uh, Final Destination Five on Blu-ray again. Uh, I watched it with my brother and his wife, and uh, it was fun watching them kind of you know, having to pick out clues leading to the end of the film. But, you know, I had a lot of fun with it. Not as much fun with the without the 3D, but, you know, still a fun film. I, probably still my second favorite of the series after part two. Have they brought it out on 3D, on DVD and Blu-ray? Um, not? Yeah, it's on. It's in 3D, but, you know, we don't have 3D television or anything. No, no okay. So they've, they've moved over to that now, haven't they? Because um, I know with, like, my belief, Valentine, the 3D was in that kind of pretty crappy sort of um, uh, sort of two-colour thing, wasn't it? All the mm. kind of yeah, mixture. Final Destination 4 came out like that as well. And okay. actually, it's pretty good. It's not it? bad. Okay, because I've still not seen Final Destination Five, so I shall. No, I, I shall... won't spoil it, but no. it's 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 a, it's a real fun movie, and it's uh, got a few surprises in it that I won't spoil. 
Okay, cool. Well, that sounds good. So, anything else? No, that's it for this week. Okay, all right. Well, thank you, Joseph. How about you, Nathan? What have you been watching? Um, I watched Isn't It Shocking, which is a made-for-TV movie from the 70s about a serial killer with, I don't know, it's sort of like, um, you know, how the hospitals have the paddles. I don't know what it's called. Defibrillator? Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, he's got like a something like that, and he's like basically killing all these old people throughout this small town with it. Um, and uh, it's got Ruth Gordon and uh, you know Amanda set on the board. She's like the world's oldest final girl ever. That sounds really good. Um, <laughs> here's my issue with it: it focuses a lot on Alan Alda as the police investigator, and like when it gets into the police investigation of it, I. You know, I don't know, like that part just doesn't interest me as much. I I did quite like uh, the scenes with Ruth Gordon, though, especially the finale, which is hilarious between her and the killer. (laughs) It's ridiculous and it's funny. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's worth checking out at least. Yeah, well, that sounds great. I love um, her in Harold's and Maud's and Home Bodies. Oh, that's one of my favorite movies ever. Have you seen Home Bodies? Yes, I love it too. Yeah, that's good. That's um, it's a good kind of. It's almost. It's not a slasher movie, but it's got um, old people murdering people, isn't it, to stay in their apartment? Yeah, that's and, and it's actually really good. You know, I like that idea. Mm, mm. Yeah. No, Ruth Gordon's great. I don't. I don't know when she died, but it's probably quite a while ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, it's a shame. Uh, but anything else? Uh, I also rewatched uh, Return of the Family Man recently, which okay. you know I I like it. Uh, a lot, you know, it's, it's a decent slasher movie. Mm. Um, you know, it's, what's funny to me is that it's obviously set in, I think South America or something. And, uh, they do their damnedest to make you think they're in America. Like every, you know, every like 10 minutes, there's some reference to them being in America. Mm. So, which is, makes it really funny. It was but, in, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's South decent. African, wasn't it? That's oh yeah, that's it. South yeah. African. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Which, ironically, there are probably more Americans in South Africa now than there are in America. If I can get a little political there. What are more Americans in South Africa than in America? <laughs> yeah, How does that work? maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, we'll have our political talk um, a little bit later. But, uh, mm. yeah, stay tuned for our controversial... Uh, the, the controversy hour, which actually, I think, our top threes could be a little bit controversial amongst certain people. <clears throat> So <laughs> can't wait for that. No, it's gonna be good. <laughs> and Nathan, have you seen anything else? Uh, I also watched the loved ones, and yeah. I loved it. I mm. thought it was great. Yeah, I really liked it. Cool. You know, like I said, it, it gets be- it gets better. I think it's one of those films. If, if I watch it more and more, I'm going to find even more things I like about it. So, uh, yeah, I liked it. You know, good right. movie. Yeah, cool. Okay, um, Eric, what about you? What have you been watching? Okay, I've watched rewatched uh, Seed of Chucky recently. Okay. Um, I do quite like the way they reinvented the Child's Play franchise um, <laughs> by turning it, uh, by taking its ridiculous concept and just going with it. Um, Seed of Chucky probably not as good as Bride, I don't think, um, but I think Jennifer Tilly is fantastic in it, playing mm. both Tiffany, the evil doll, and herself as Jennifer Tilly, the actress who is menaced oh, she's by. Fantastic in any way. Yes. <laughs> In two ways. Do you, did you say? do you love her? I love her. Yeah. Come come to daddy. Is that because she's got big baloobies? Uh that's one of the reasons. I don't know. Yeah, I like her two, voice. that's two of the reasons. I like her squeaky really. voice. <laughs> yeah, she has got a, whole, a, a uh, she's got a brilliant squeaky voice. Yeah, yes. very Marilyn Monroe sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Um like. What do you think of Cedar Chucky? Did you rate it highly? I don't really remember Seed of Chucky. I watched like half of it, and it kind of went in one one ear and out the other. But I, I love Bride of Chucky. I thought that yeah. was just you know, hilarious. Bride of Chucky is is fantastic. Seed of Chucky not as good, but there is a brilliant sequence where uh, Chucky's son decides to go try out some transvestitism, and he ends up looking a bit like Linda Day George. <laughs> really? <laughs> what in pieces? I don't remember that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I well, in many. You, though. What? I, I like Seed of Chucky better. Oh, do you? Yeah. No, I, well, still, I, I, still, love, I still think it's good, yeah. I love the fact that Seed of Chucky kind of had the guts to go with the ending that Bride of Chucky didn't. Hmm. I've not, I haven't seen either for a long time, so I don't remember. Mm. But on, on the, what's happening with the remake? Or the re-event? They're basically rebooting the film, yeah. starting from scratch and kind of giving it more of a scary vibe, which, you know, is fine with me. Let's see yeah. what they do with it. Yeah. Is it do we know what's, um, where, where that's at at the moment? 
No, all I do know is that I think it's next year and that Brad Dourif is still going to be Chucky, so... Okay, well, that's good. That's good. Great. Okay, Eric, anything else? Yeah, one other thing. It's not a slasher, but it will be horrific probably to you, Justin. I saw um, the 1983 John Travolta movie, Staying Alive. Uh, This is one I... This was what I saw in the 80s and hated, but Meep mm. uh, from the forums convinced me to give it another go, and I thought it was utterly brilliant. Mm. Yes. If you, like, if you like fashion disasters and 80s slasher movies, this is it, sort of, for 90 minutes. But without any slasher. You ever wonder, <laughs> you ever wonder how, how much oil John Travolta has on his body in that film? Yeah. He's, like, caked in it. It's, like, <laughs> obs- obscene amounts of uh, glistening sweat and... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a shame yeah, that, that title. Sounds like you're getting a bit um, excited there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can we go back to Jennifer Tilly, please? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it's, it's a shame that title's gone, isn't it? Because Staying Alive would be a great title for a slasher movie. Well, there was that computer gamey one called Was it Stay Alive? It was called. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nathan also, loves that film. No, I don't like it. <laughs> you told me you loved it. I did not say that. Uh, okay. Sounds sounds like more controversy. Yeah, you'll be in trouble when you get home tonight, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> but there's um, there's a blowout as well, isn't it? Brian De Palma, it's got um, obviously John Travolta in it, and it's got that great opening scene. Although Brian De Palma's obviously taking the piss out of slasher movies, but that great mm. opening kind of um, montage, well, that scene of um, a faux slasher movie, isn't it? Yeah, in a in a girl's dormitory. Yeah, yeah, and it, it climaxes like, in a uh, really, really crap scream, yeah. which is what John Travolta's the sound man, and they're trying to get him to mm. uh, locate a good quality scream for them to use. It would be such, it would be fantastic climax. if they did that, wouldn't it? Did uh, if that was a real film, um, but sadly not. Sadly mm. not. But um, okay, was there anything else, Eric? Uh, n- well, no, not uh, slasher related. I'm afraid uh, I could go on and on and on about films that have no re- relation to horror at all, if you want. Well, we maybe if we um, run out of other things to say, because I'm sure mm. we'd love to hear about them. But um, you know, we, how many times can you talk <laughs> about Bob Hoskins goes goes down? Sorry, sorry. What did you say there? I said, how many times can you talk about Bob Hoskins goes down? That famous mm. film yeah. in Australia. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I've I've not actually seen any slasher movies as such um, over the last couple of weeks, but what I have seen is I've seen a few horror movies. One of them's Mutants, which is the um, French zombie movie, uh, which has got a kind of slasher esque kind of um, elements to it because it's essentially it's uh, kind of a story <clears throat> of a, a doctor and a husband um, uh, that France has or the world's collapsed a zombie outbreak and. Um, they're out in the mountains in France, I presume, and it's very snowy, and they end up in a in a massive building complex, and her husband gets infected and slowly becomes a zombie, and he starts chasing around this huge building, um, and there's all these other monsters, well, zombies, mutants, um, come in to get her as well. Um, and that's got some slasher movie moments in it, definitely, so uh, it's no great shakes, but it looks good. It's kind of decent budget. That's worth a look. Um, the other one I've seen, which is one that I don't many people have ever seen, it's called The Boneyard, um, and it's got Phyllis Diller, which is kind of, uh, she was an American comedian from, was it the 50s or 60s? And has anyone, any of you guys seen The Boneyard? I think, it does it have, um, James, is it James Wong is his name? The guy uh, from Big Trouble in Little China and Prince of Darkness? James Hong. James, James Hong. Hong, sorry. I don't remember anyone of... No, you know, well, I'm probably thinking of something else then. It's got, yeah. well, you'd, you'd know it if you'd seen it, because it's got a giant poodle in it. Okay, it doesn't that doesn't ring any bells? No, well, it's from 1991. I saw it at one of the kind of shock around the clocks or one of those kind of 24-hour film festivals the Scala used to do. It was the same showing that I saw the Exorcist three the first time, um, and essentially it's kind of uh, it's it's basically like a kind of zombie kind of movie. I kind of guess. Um, and it's a comedy because Phyllis still is in it and she's kind of obviously, you know, a comedian. Um, and it's kind of half horror comedy, but it's one of those horror comedies that really works because it's kind of based around a um, uh, sort of three zombie children or three uh, basic corpses of children, which are kind of just these really naughty zombies, but not in a really thready esque, you know, bad way, but they are kind of just quite they're the scariest looking zombies you've ever seen they look like proper rotted dead children with kind of sunken dark eyes and they're just kind of um chasing these people around this morgue uh basement morgue and then it's kind of then you get a giant poodle and mm. phyllis phyllis diller is a kind of giant seven foot zombie as well so it all goes a bit silly but it's it's worth a look if you've not seen it it's kind of an overlooked not exactly classic but it's um it's a very 80s-esque kind of fun sort of horror movie uh, and the only other film I've seen is The Woman, 
which is I think Lucky McKee's. Um, oh, I want to see that. Someone told me it was good, and it looked well, it, really good. Yeah, oh, me got, too. It's got what's her name from May in it. Uh, I can't remember her name. Angela now. Bettis. Yes, yeah, she looks very old in it, actually. Well, kind of oldish. I suppose she's probably well, a lot older than she was when she made May, but. Um, uh, but uh, it's kind of, I mean, if you don't know the story, I mean, without getting anything away, it's just a, a kind of normal, in inverted commas, um, suburb, well, not even suburban, but like a family, American family, um, uh, the, the father goes out hunting and then he finds a, a kind of a woman who's obviously living, a kind of wild woman who's kind of living out by a river and he kind of managed to capture her and he brings her back with the idea of basically civilizing her but what it turns out um which is very it happens very quickly is the fact is that the family is hugely dysfunctional and while the woman herself is a cannibal and is in no way kind of functional the family is completely dysfunctional in other ways and it kind of it follows follows that to its logical conclusion um and there's kind of lots of kind of it's it's not torture porn by any uh, any stretch it's been criticized it's kind of a strange film for a man to make because it's kind of all the men in it are bastards or mad and all the women are victims um and uh, so it's kind of a strange thing so it's caused quite a few different reactions to people but yeah it's it's worth seeing it's worth seeing um but no you've you haven't seen eric uh no i thought the, the name did ring a bell but i'm describing it no no, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. sorry, I'm the, the woman. Uh, sorry, I'm still thinking about the boneyard. The woman I haven't seen. No, but I do hear it is good. But it's, it sounds like it's a one watch film rather than a one that you'd watch multiple times. Yeah, yeah. It's not. I, um, yeah, it's not. I saw it cheap on. Um, it was on pay per view on TV, and it's like ninety nine p or something. So we took a chance of it. But it's yeah, it's worth seeing. But actually, you might be right about the boneyard because there is a there is a um, Japanese guy in it. No, right? I was just the reason I was distracted there. I was looking on IMDb and. Um, I don't see it's Victor Wong actually is the actor I was thinking of and he doesn't seem to be in it. So okay, okay, uh, yeah, it's worth. Don't you worth ever get that wrong again? Yeah, don't get it wrong. Sorry. <laughs> I will okay. come up or over there, whatever. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, see, there's it's threats of violence and there's dissent. I think amongst our I've had it with Eric's class. shenanigans. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right, well, okay. Well, that's our recently seen. Um, if you've seen any good uh, sort of slash movies or anything you want to talk about, then do feedback to us. Um, Joseph, have you got the, the feedback details to hand? Yes, because we don't have any feedback this week. Uh, you can reach us at the.hysteria.continues at gmail.com. You can leave us a voicemail at 858-233-9281. Uh, we're on Facebook. Just search for The Hysteria Continues. We're also on Twitter. That's twitter.com forward slash... THC underscore podcast. Well, yeah, because we, we worked out, didn't we, Joseph? We worked out, was it about 5,000 downloads uh, show? Yeah. Um, r- yeah, between my site and the XML feed, we're getting roughly, um, on a monthly, we're getting right around 5,000 a month. So that's pretty good. And <laughs> we're not getting very much uh, feedback. It's kind of weird. Yeah, so if you are listening, I mean, it'd just be nice to to hear back from you. And if you, especially if you've not written in before, um, we'd just like to hear what you think of the show and also what your favourite slash movies or what you'd like us to cover on the show, then that that would be really good, especially with Christmas coming up. It would be a nice little present for us. So so do do um, get back in touch. And um, without further ado, we shall head on to our top three, which um, I said, said, what? Did I hear a snigger? That was my sneeze. Oh, okay. Ah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, our top threes, we're going to be doing um, best, well, our favourite, um, not necessarily the best slash movies from um, the year 2000 onwards. And to start off with, um, we're going to go with Joseph. Okay, Joseph, take it away. Okay, my number three is the little appreciated sequel to, and if you didn't hear the words urban legend in the film, then it's obviously urban legends final cut. Uh, which is a film I rather disliked at first, but I've kind of grown to appreciate it the more I watch it. Uh, for starters, it has Hart Bachner, which is always a good addition to any film, and it plays around with some rather you know nifty settings and weather more so than the first film. Uh, it's also sillier and more outlandish than the first film, but that's actually a good thing. I especially love the sequence, and I've spoken of this before on the show, where uh, Jennifer Morrison's character is hiding underneath a Steinway, and the killer, you know, knowing she's there, starts hitting the low keys and sort of a play on suspense, like the chords that they use in to, to jolt people in the audience. But uh, 
Of course, the ending is, you know, suitably Scooby-Doo-esque in so much that the killer's monologue is protracted and complicated, and props to the actor for working in the term lesbo prison into his speech. Uh, I I really like this film a lot. Actually, I love this film. It's kind of underappreciated. You know, like I said, it's silly, but, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. But uh, what do you guys think? Well, it's John Ottman, wasn't it? Who was says? Yeah, he, he did. Um, he's the compo- he's the composer, and he uh, got the directorial duties handed to him by uh, whoever was um, Jamie Blanks did the first one. They yeah. wanted him to come back, but then he he recommended John Ottman for it. Okay, did John, did John Ottman do the music for Find uh, so Urban Legends? Urban yeah, Legends. he did yeah. Uh, the music for the first one too, I believe. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I mean, I I'm not I don't like it as much as you, Joseph. I mean, I I really like urban legend because it's so damn cheesy um urban legends i think is is it looks great um and i like they kind of borrowed the um uh the mask didn't they from graduation day or you know and the fencing mask wasn't it and that's kind of a good good cover for the killer i haven't seen it for a few years but i, I mean i really like hart bockner i think he's great in, in terror train and apartment zero um and he's pretty good here he's, he's unfortunately he's a really underutilized actor really isn't he? you don't really see him around no, much these no. days which is a real shame um but yeah it'd be great if we when we do the terror train episode i wonder if we get him on hmm. but yeah no I, I haven't seen it for a number of years so i can't really remember what i thought of it that much but um i think it's kind of pretty it's pretty daft in a, in a good kind of way and it looks good doesn't it and it's eva mendez is in it isn't she yes eva yeah. mendez yeah so and she can look at she's got a, a bigger career from it and um and jenna what's her, jennifer morrison wasn't it yeah, she's on one of those medical shows I don't watch. Uh, oh, is she, right. Okay, the House or something like that. Right, okay, because I wasn't sure if she'd went on to do anything else, because she was in that, um, was it the thing with Kevin Bacon, wasn't she, St- Stir of Echoes? I think it was about Yeah, she was the girl. Yeah, the, um, that's right. Not to spoil it, she was the girl, that's all I'll yeah, say. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got I've got a cat's tail keeps on going, flack, flipping in front of my face onto the microphone, So <laughs> and also she keeps on chuffing as well, mm. which isn't good. Ew. So, Oh, I know it's it's bad. Getting pussy juice stuff. all over the microphone. Well, not that stuff. Chuffing's far too. <laughs> mm. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. Yes, um, I know. I heard that. <laughs> anyway, so what about you? What about you, Nathan and um, Eric? What are your thoughts on? Yeah, I really, I really like um, Urban Legends. It. Uh, I went. Remember going trying to go see it in the cinema, but by the time I got round to it, it was gone. It had it lasted about a week, I think, in cinemas over here. Right. I think it came with such. Um, bad publicity and it did bad box office in the states that mm. they didn't so it was you know it was a while before i caught it i had to wait for it to come out in dvd but i think it's fun I, as like you i don't think it's a, it's as good as the original the original is one of my favorites of the 90s mm. and the sequel is good though good fun well made i especially like that opening sequence with the uh, plane yeah that's great that's yeah. good fun isn't it how about yeah. you nathan what are your thoughts on it i like both of them equally i think i think they're both really cheesy and funny and you know they have uh, you know they're, they have a lot of good points to them, I think, and I really like the character of Reese. Although yeah. I got to say, I, I really loved her scene in part one, though, when she was like, "Get up against the wall, you loony psycho bitch." Yeah, I don't know why, but that line is so funny. And have you seen um, anyone seen the third one? Is it Bloody yes. Mary? Yes, oh, Bloody Mary. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a all- it's a supernatural one. Yeah. It's got some of the worst CGI ever done, isn't it? It was Mary Lambert did it. I think it's late Mary Lambert who did the original Pet Cemetery directed it, which oh. is um, which am I right in thinking that? I think I am. I don't know. She did. Yes, I believe you're right. I I didn't like Pet Cemetery. I have to say. Didn't you? No. I love Pet Cemetery too. It's so much fun. Clancy Brown with, just totally takes Jay, that movie. Uh, you know? With what's his name from Terminator Two? Uh, yeah, Edward, Edward Furlong. Fur- Eddie, Eddie, yeah. Eddie Furlong. Yeah. Okay, I've never seen. Have you seen two. the second one, Eric? No. Um, I think I did see it on the Sci Fi Channel, uh, but I, I couldn't be hundred percent sure. <laughs> yeah, it, it, for nothing else, watch that for uh, Clancy Brown. I mean, he totally mm. just you know takes the reins of that movie and just runs with it. It's just so much fun. I can confirm that Mary Lambert did direct Urban Legends, Bloody Mary. Thank you, and it's got some really. I just remember it's got really, really bad CGI gore in it. Mm, well, it was it's mid it's mid noughties straight to DVD, so a lot of them were yeah. doing that. Okay, well, well, thank you, Joseph, for your number three. We're heading towards our number twos, very one by one. But before we get there, we have Nathan's number three. Um, I've always been a huge fan of May, 
Um, I kind of like how the first, you know, portion of the movie, aside from a few instances of, you know, weirdness, is not really a horror movie. I mean, it's almost kind of a drama about this girl who's just incredibly lonely and, you know, just wants somebody to actually love and care about her because she doesn't have anybody. And, um, you know, I guess, you know, I like the way that her doll in the glass case, like the way it it kind of cracks the glass as her sanity gets, you know, more and more lost. Um, and, you know, all the characters are really good in it. You know, um, I, I really like, um, you know, uh, Anna Faris um, and uh, Jeremy Sisto as the two people who are kind of in over their heads with May. Um, and I really like the finale, you know, where she just completely loses it and decides to make her own friend. You know, that's a, it's a really good and interesting, like, movie. What yeah. do you guys think? Yeah. I haven't seen it for a long time, but I do remember thinking it was kind of, it was kind of interesting variation on pieces and also the, is it the school that cried murder? Because that was the, the, the um, or the school that screamed or whatever. It was this 1969 Spanish film, which had a similar idea of kind of um, making a, um, a friend or something from body parts. Uh, but yeah, Angela Bettis is kind of, you know, is born to play weird, isn't she? Yeah. Very much. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How about you, uh, Joseph? What are your thoughts? I like May. You know, I, sometimes I get that one mixed up with uh, Love Object because uh, I don't really. I mean, I've I've seen May. You know, I've seen it once, so I don't really remember a whole lot. But I remember it and Love Object were similar. You know, and using, uh, you know, I wouldn't say parts for both films, but I think you get what I'm getting at. But uh, yeah, no, I like I like May. Uh, from what I can remember, I always thought you know the performances were great and the story was kind of interesting but um it's i think it's a movie i really need to watch again because it's been a while greg loves it yeah it's like one of his favorites i'm surprised actually i know me too i thought it was a little too intelligent for him (laughs) damning a faint praise how about you um eric you've seen it yeah i like uh, you guys i haven't like it's a long time since i've seen may i think it was was it 2002 it came out I think 2000, was, yeah, yeah like right, that, it was it? around then. So mm. it's it's literally eight or nine years since I've seen it, but I do remember liking it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you. Well, are we surprised? No. Oh, should we? Should we be? Oh, I don't know. I think there's awesome. a few more slightly contentious uh, choices coming up very soon, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Contentious. Con- con- contemptuous or contentious? <laughs> well, maybe both. Let's see. Well, this is Eric's number three. Ooh la la, sacre bleu. Inside uh, from a few years ago. Um, it's a story of a pregnant woman who on uh, whose husband dies in a car accident that she's also involved in. Uh, so a few months later on Christmas Eve, she finds herself alone. Uh, well, not quite alone. She's being uh, menaced by this psychotic woman who gains entry to the house and then goes on the rampage uh, with various implements, mainly with a huge big pair of scissors. Uh, I watched this again. The, I, I've, this is only the second time I watched it. I watched it the other night. Uh, probably not as good as I remembered, but I didn't really have time to be thinking up uh, other films from my top three. Um, mainly the, the the problem with it is that parts of it are just so grim that it just doesn't, you know, um, stand up to multiple viewings. But then on the other hand, parts of it are just utterly ridiculous. Uh, some of the gore is on a par with something you would see in the likes of Reanimator or Brain Dead. But then, you know, the general tone of the film, apart from the gore, is more along the lines of something like Martyrs. Uh, so it has a weird dual thing going on there. But uh, I think in terms of horror, you're not going to be disappointed because... Um, after the first 15 minutes, you know, there's just no let up. It's just nonstop uh, violence and terror and suspense. And and it's it's a nice, short, little, punchy little film. It, it's just a little over 70 minutes long. So uh, that's my number three, Inside. Hmm. Okay. Well, how about you, um, Nathan and Joseph? You've seen it? Yes. Oh, yes. I love, I love Inside. Inside. <laughs> I think uh, uh, it. Inch Poke, give me a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd love a Coke. Would you have uh, <laughs> go ahead. I'll let you go first. Thank you. Um, I really. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to speak now. Go and speak. So I should. It's uh, my fault. For speaker forever. Hold really. your peace. Ooh. He, he's like always holding his peace. Uh, Mitch, please. I'm not that kind of doctor. <laughs> anyway, it's the first of those. So Nathan, <laughs> go on. 
while Joseph holds his peace. Yeah. I like the movie. The okay. end. Oh, oh, very, oh, come very on. succinct. How about you, Joseph? What are your thoughts on Inside? I'll I'll speak for him. Um, I love Inside. Um, it it like Eric said, it's so kind of over the top, but it's really kind of disturbing. You know, it has a good balance there. And um, this is a film that our friend uh, Grant Grant refuses to watch because uh, why is it he refuses to watch this again, Nathan? Uh, because he's afraid of it. He's afraid of torture movies. But you know what? I think he's going to watch it either this f- upcoming Friday or the next one. Was he yeah. afraid well, of being pregnant? Or he something? watched The Loved Ones, and The Loved Ones is pretty graphic, so I think he could handle that. And he watched Martyrs. Anyone who can watch Martyrs can watch Inside. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Sorry, uh, I think the big, the big um, scene in Martyrs are in Inside that would disturb people most is the very end scene on the stairs. And I, I'm wondering, uh, Justin, do you know, did this get um, an uncut release in the UK? As far as I'm aware, yes. Yeah, um, I don't I'm think it was, very surprised. Yeah, I, I, I'm not entirely sure, but I think it mm. did. Um, my favourite scene in it is, because it's Beatrice Dahl, who is the um, yeah. psychotic <clears> woman, <throat> who was um, uh, art house um, viewers. Uh, know Betty Blue, Betty wasn't Blue, it? Yeah. who was quite mental in that as well. She cuts her own eye out, I think. Um, but I love the fact that, because it's it's a French movie, and it's just... It couldn't be. I don't know if they're doing it on purpose, but I love the fact that she takes a break from um, torturing this poor woman by trying to hammer the door down to get cut out her unborn baby by stopping to have a, a fag break. Well, <laughs> which is very you French. You don't understand the addiction of of nicotine. Well, I do. I used to smoke. I used to smoke. <laughs> oh, did years. you? I did. Yeah. Oh. For many years, I did. I smoked. I don't smoke anymore, but I did. Um, yeah. Well, I'm glad you don't because there's nothing cool or grown up about it. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, that's. I gave that up many moons ago. But but it's very Gallic, very Gallic thing to um uh, to you know. It stop. would have been more Gallic if she stopped for a baguette break. Yes, but I just imagine. Could you imagine like Jason Voorhees or um, Michael Myers <laughs> if they were French and Michelle Myers stopping um, to have a you know a Gaulois Gaulois or something um, yeah. after chasing Jamie De Curtis? Then she would have got away. So <laughs> see if it were yeah. Eric trying to steal her baby, he'd stop for a Kit Kat break. Exactly, I would a chunky Kit Kat break. Break him off a piece of that Kit Kat. That's what he'd <laughs> say. Yeah. Oh, blimey. So I've just had a cat. I've had a cat. I was surrounded by cats, so you might be able to hear her purring. But she walked across my um, my uh, my um, keyboard, so it's all gone a bit wonky. But I think we're okay. Um, yes, I think we can we're on still to... hear you. Sorry? We can still hear you. That's good. That's good. Hello? Um, Anyone there? Yes, yes, yes. But anyway, here's my number three. The remake of Black Christmas, which, as far as I'm concerned, is the um, I Still Know What You Did Last Summer of the noughties. Um, basically, possibly the most misunderstood um slash movie uh i you know compare it to the original black christmas then um it's pants you know it's it's, it's it doesn't hold a candle to it at all but when you look at it as a fun sorority house slasher which is what it is it doesn't take itself too seriously it decided that the um the idea that a killer lurking inside the house is so shot worn and you know it you know it's not going to scare a mouse let alone an audience a modern audience then i think this is the only way they could take it with a bit of tongue in cheek turn it into um a fun popcorn but slightly perverted and still quite dark slash movie and i you know i just think it's a lot of fun and i know it got hated you know it's really slated on its release both by critics and horror fans um but i don't really see where the problem is you know it's it's not trying to be black christmas i mean it's using using the name but it's not trying to um, remake the original, really. It's 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 doing it under its own terms. And so, you know, I've always quite enjoyed it. And I'm quite happy to say so. So um, how about you guys? What about you, Eric? Yeah, I love it as well. I mean, like you, I went to the cinema to see it and was expecting rubbish because the reviews were so bad. And I was like, but this is really good. Why are people moaning so much? Mm-hmm. Um, I think just because it's a remake of Black Christmas, one of the classics, and not a remake of, you know, Graduation Day or House and Sorority Row, that people were so up in arms. You know, a beloved classic was defiled in their eyes. But as you say, I mean, a lot of those remakes from the noughties anyway are just in name only. So um, I think Black Christmas was pretty darn good. And from the creators of the Final Destination series as well, which uh, something I think we all like. Yeah, definitely, definitely. No, thank you, Eric. How about you, Nathan? I've always loved the Black Christmas remake. I went and saw it on Christmas Day at oh, the really? theater. Okay. By myself because I didn't have anybody that would go with me. Oh, I don't. I don't think cinemas open on Christmas Day over here, do they, Justin? No, they're not. Not where I am. I don't think. No, not where I am either. 
Uh, that house so, in that movie is so cozy. Like, yeah. it just looks so cozy to me. I just want to curl up on the, you know, the sofa and take a nap. But you'd be murdered. Mm. Well, you know, I, I do it before Christmas. Okay. I do it like you know in January, or actually not in January. I do it maybe in. Uh, actually, I do it after the murders. Okay, in well, January. That's, that's that's right. Okay, well that's, that sounds like a good idea. How about you, Joseph? Um, sorry, I just do not like this film. Ah, we see this is where the um, descent comes. Ooh, oh, ooh, yeah. Yeah. I, I get what it's trying to do. You know, I, I appreciate that it's not trying to remake, uh, you know, the, the formula that made the original so well, uh, such a classic. But I don't know. I, I don't care for anyone in the film. I, it's not it's not thrilling. It's not fun. I don't find it fun. I mean, it, I really do need to watch it again. Maybe my opinion will change, but... I don't know. I was just bored. I, I thought it was kind of distasteful. I mean, in, not in a good way. I mean, I, I have nothing. I have no problem with you know bad taste, but I don't know. It just it was one of those films where I was watching, and the whole time I you know I kept you know looking at my phone or uh, kept looking out you know focusing on other things. But uh, I don't know. I just didn't care for it. Okay, well, that's that's um, always good to have different opinions, even if you are wrong, Joseph. But um, thank you for that. Um, what did you think of the trailer? Did you see the deleted scenes in the trailer? Like, there's a a scene where one of the girls is caught like with these lights, and there's this light thing that's kind of spiraling around and dragging her towards it. I've always wondered what that thing was, uh, and it's only in the I think, trailer. Did- didn't we get a different version of Black Christmas than the States did, Justin? You we might did. be an expert on this. We no, we yeah, we did get a different version. The, the ending was different. Um, All right. The in the American uh, the American version was when he gets impaled on the Christmas tree at the end, which we we had a different version um, to that. And I can't. I mean, there is if you look if you're interested. I mean, look up on IMDb. I think there's there's quite a good breakdown of the differences between the two. But but yeah, I just kind of always wondered that. It's a bit like um, Paranormal Activity three, which I've, I've still not seen. But a lot of people were complaining because. Because loads of the scenes that were in the trailer weren't in the film at all. In fact, I think true. almost all of the the trailer wasn't in it. Uh, and whether or not that means that they shot extra stuff or they shot the trailer before they made the film, um, and so they had something early to show people, I don't know. But I think um, I got I got feeling that Black Christmas the remake was um, quite troubled. I think it may have gone through because um, it wasn't a box office success from what I remember and I, I, I've got a feeling it may have gone through some reshoots so but um, but I have a feeling um, although Joseph doesn't like it and obviously that's that's fair enough I think they may not be the only film we have a disagreement with um, and if you disagree with any of our choices or you agree with them then you know what to do but I know what to do next um, and are you ready for it? We are ready <laughs> Bring it on Plus in the toilet he's a cat well, my big number two was almost my number one, but it didn't quite make the cut. Uh, still, it's a fabulous film, and that film is Wrong Turn, you know, which stars uh, Desmond Harrington and the yummy Eliza Dushku as two of several individuals who make the ghastly mistake of venturing into the West Virginian woods, uh, albeit unintentionally, where they run afoul of three really inbred psycho hillbillies who proceed to make mincemeat out of anyone unfortunate enough to cross their path or to trespass onto their territory. Um, what I like about this film is that it's extremely suspenseful, and uh, the locations are top-notch. I uh, Finally, I have to say, you know, I really like the characters a lot, and, you know, uh, they're all so likable that, you know, it kind of drives the film, and you really want to see them, you know, make it out of the situation alive, you know, or at least partially unscathed. Um it was followed by three sequels, two of which I've seen and didn't particularly care for, but uh, that's not a detraction on Wrong Turn because uh, there really isn't much that can hinder what a fun, you know, rip-roaring backwoods thriller this is. But, uh, yeah, um, it almost, like I said, it almost made my number one, but not quite, but close enough. So uh, how about you, Justin? What do you think of Wrong Turn? Well, funny enough, we watched it last night. Um, I've always, yeah, I've, I've always enjoyed it. I kind of, um, uh, it's funny actually watching last night how dated it looks already. And it was only made, what, 2003? So it's yeah. about eight years ago, but it already looks really dated. And the other thing I kind of um, realised was um, it's got the, because uh, I'm quite a fan of the Dawn of the Dead remake, um, I kind of really like that. But it's got um, Kevin Zegers and Lindy Booth, who are the, the kind of doomed couple at the beginning of uh, final um, of um, Wrong Turn. They're also kind of um, star-crossed lovers in Dawn of the Dead the next year, which which 
you know, that was just an aside. But yeah, I, re- I really like it. I, I know, wasn't there a load of trouble from the West Virginian tourist board at the time? Perhaps unsurprisingly. That I'm not aware of. I haven't read anything about it, but it'd be interesting if that's true. Is it, is it, am I right in thinking in America that West Virginia is kind of known as the kind of, you know, like the Norfolk of America? Which is kind of <laughs> um, well, I, I've been through West Virginia, and uh, there's some parts you know that seems normal, but there's some parts that would you know scare pretty much anyone. So maybe right. that's true. I don't know. Okay, okay, yeah. Well, how about you, um, Nathan? What you, you? I'm sure you've seen this. Oh yeah, I've, I've always loved Wrong Turn. It probably would have made my top three if Joseph hadn't usurped it. Hmm. I like that word, usurped. Usurp. And Eric, mm-hmm. what about you? Oh, I, I love wrong. Force. I do love Wrong Turn. I went. To, I remember going to see it twice in the cinema when it came out. Yeah. Um, strangely enough, I've never bought it on DVD, but I probably will at some stage. Um, I do think it's it's terrific. I'm, I'm curious to know. You say it's dated. In in what way is it? The the effects look a bit shoddy, or is it because of the fashions? Or the fashions actually, the, the effects yeah. look look pretty good. I mean, because it's Stan, not Stan Winston. Who was it? Who who was the guy who... Stan Winston. Stan Winston, Winston did the effects was, for wrong turn. Yeah, I mean, the, the special effects look great. I mean, there's a few slightly dodgy CGI things. Most of it's kind of, um, um, you know, uh, latex effects. And the, the mutants yeah. look, you know, the backwards people look really good. It's actually the fashion. Um, Kevin Zegers wears a very dated-looking pair of sunglasses. And the girls are wearing kind of slightly, I don't know... I mean, you being a fashion concert, um, uh, Eric, I'm sure you will you will see what I mean. I, when you I should it. just clarify, I'm not a fashion connoisseur, but I do love when I watch 80s things and I see really, really loud pinks and, and purples and big shoulder pads. Well, we get but, aside, but aside from that, I'm not, I mean, I'm not um, Tyra Banks. Are you not? Are you not? No, I thought you I'm were. not. Okay. No. <laughs> but, I was about um, to call I'm, Eric I'm, Mr. Blackwell. I'm quite close <laughs> to Miss J, though. Oh, yeah, well, who yeah. isn't? So, okay, well... Um, well, that's um, Joseph's number two. Uh, I think, Nathan, you deserve your own flush, don't you? I do. He's a cat! Severance, uh, Nathan. Why'd you choose that? Oh, I chose it because I'm, I'm in love with it. I think it's uh, a fantastic movie. Um, I mean, it's it balances its comedy really well with uh, the horror. And uh, I just, I love, you know, the final guy and the final girl in the movie. I mean, you know, Laura Harris is awesome. One of my favorite scenes is when she um, finally gets the drop on, uh, you know, the villain uh, or, or one of them. And, um, mm. you know, like before he even had the chance to do anything, she just blows his head off with a shotgun. And she's just like, I didn't want to be accused of not killing him when I didn't have the chance. I mean, because, you know, most horror movies, the characters are like, you know, knock the killer out and run away. So I always thought that that was a funny scene. Um, I also love the scene where she... Um, you know, is going to pick up a rock and smash the killer's head in, and there's a big rock, but she can't lift it. You know, it's too big. So then she has to move over and pick up the, you know, the smaller rock. You know, I, I, I don't know. I just think it's a really entertaining movie. I mean, I could watch it, you know, over and over and never get tired of it. I love that thick British accent, too. Yeah. Well, how about you, Eric? Um, what are your thoughts? Uh- um, yeah, I quite like Severance. I mean, I do like, like Christopher Smith's movies. I prefer uh, Creep and Triangle. And I was just thinking when Nathan was talking there, I was wondering if Triangle could qualify as a slasher movie. Oh, yeah, so. definitely. Oh, oh, it would have made my top three then if I just sort of thought long oh, and hard. Oh, God, it's so good. If I thought long and hard, yeah. Justin. Oh, Sorry, I'm sorry. You're a bit I'm, slow. I am. Um, so no, I was just looking I, up Severance on IMDb because I just want to check something. But um, oh. um, but uh, sorry, but uh, for you, Eric. Nathan, no, please. Oh, your hand. Ah. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. But no, as a Severance is one I'd like to watch again because I only saw it the once when it came out in the cinema. Um, I thought it was quite good. I thought, as I said, Creep and Triangle are better. But I'll give it another go. But a good choice. Mm-hmm. How about you, uh, Joseph? Well, I just want to say I think Severance is a million times better than Creep. But um, that aside, I really like Severance a lot. Um, I think the comedy is like spot on. It's 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 hilarious, and it's you know it's properly gory. It's suspenseful. It has uh, very likable characters. Uh, I mean, what else can you say about it? It's just a, a really excellent film. Very underrated, I think. Yeah, and I just want to make clear, I don't think Danny Dyer was talking about my Catsy biscuit when he was t- saying about um, uh, getting people to ride them. So 
That's all I'm going to say. What, what, I, what did he say? We said something that all you need to do is buy a British bird, a uh, Bacardi Breezer, and she'll ride you like Sea Biscuit. <laughs> and um, my cat, one of my cats is called Sea Biscuit. Um, mm, I, I didn't name her that, but that's what she's called. So, And I don't think Danny Dyer was referring to my, my pussy. So there you go. But, Ooh. Um, Ooh, but, matron. <laughs> No, it's not worthy of an election, I'm afraid. But I do say I did. I did really like um, Severance. I think it's good. It's um, a lot of fun, um, and it does strike the balance again. Very rare to get a good comedy horror slasher movie, but um, yeah, that does it well. Um, okay, well, uh, would you like a little bit of a cat, cat even flushing a toilet, Eric? Oh, do you have to ask? Uh, I didn't think I did, but here you go. He's a cat. Okay, well, Oulala and Sacre Bleu, once again, it's another French film, Switchblade Romance, also known as Haute Tension, uh, or High Tension. Uh, it's kind of strange hearing it with uh, English voices on it, and f- because uh, I've only ever known it as a French language film. I don't think it was released in a dubbed version over here, so I'm assuming that's a, a, an American trailer. Um, it's a story of a girl called Alex who brings her best friend Marie back to her family who live in rural France. Um, that night, uh, a smelly old man begins killing them all. Uh, He kidnaps Alex and Marie chases after him to try and rescue her. Uh, This is a film I'm sure will divide opinion. I know that you like it, Justin. I'm intrigued to know what Joseph and Nathan think. It's a film that divides people for one particular reason, and that's because 15 minutes from the end, it veers off in a a quite silly twist. Um, And that's, I mean, I don't think anyone is going to disagree that it's a silly twist, but some people are going to be, it's going to ruin the film completely for them. For me, it doesn't particularly, it does alter your viewing, your multiple viewings of it, uh, you know, subsequently. But uh, I do still love it. It's very suspenseful. Has some outrageous gore that is really, really reminiscent of the uh, 80s. It's done by Gianetto De Rossi, who did all the, uh, he did lots of gore effects on famous Italian um, horror films from the late 70s and early 80s, particularly um, Fulci's Zombie Flesh Eaters. And it has that look. It has a real sort of rough around the edges gore. Um, it's the, I think it's the debut film by Alexandra Aja, who went on to to do the really, really good remake of Hills of Eyes, which, you know, was a contender for my top three because I really like that film. He also did Mirrors and Piranha, which I thought were two fairly decent movies. He's also actually written the screenplay for the upcoming remake of Maniac, which stars um, What's-His-Face from Lord of the Rings. Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood, that's it, yeah. So I don't know how successful that's going to be. But uh, yeah, Switchblade Romance, my number two. I do like it in spite of its silly twist. Okay, well, do you want to ask her, how about Joseph, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I like the movie all right. You know, I think, it, like Eric said, it has some really good gore. But, you know, if I'm watching a film and the ending really just kind of doesn't sit well with me, then I have no reason to, you know, to kind of want to go back and revisit because I know that it's going to get to an ending that I don't like. And I really thought the ending to uh, Switchblade Romance was very insulting, not to mention... Uh, something they've done uh, over and over and over, and I've seen it in so many other movies that I was just so tired of it by the time it came around. And um, I don't know, the ending really does kind of make or break the film, but if you can get past the ending, it's not too bad, actually. It's, you know, it's tolerable, good gore, good suspense. Uh, I'd give it a recommendation, I guess, overall. Okay, well, how about you, Nathan? Um, I really love the movie. Um, I kind of agree with Eric in that. Um, I don't particularly care for the twist. Uh, I kind of liked it a lot better, you know, like as a straightforward slasher movie without that twist in there. But the twist doesn't really ruin the movie for me. I can still get a lot of enjoyment out of it. And there's something about seeing the killer running after the girl in the woods with that giant saw that i mean it's a very striking image uh, i guess that's why they've used it a lot on like posters and stuff <laughs> mm. there's yeah. a great uh, murder weapon as well which i'm surprised got past the bbfc in england which is the barbed wire wrapped around the piece of wood mm. oh yeah which is quite vicious no, he's vicious. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, but every time i do watch the film i wish it would just take a more straightforward slasher film route to the very end because um, it, it's less suspenseful second time around when once you know the ending. Well, I just kind of hate that, yeah. you know, you are really, you know, rooting for a, a character and then that just kind of all goes out the window. <laughs> mm. I mean, I, re- I really, really like it. I, I love the twist. I think it's great. You know, I think the whole thing is, is perfect to, for my mind. And I don't personally, I don't think the, the twist is silly 
Um, I may be in a very small minority, but, but I think you, do you not think it affects your if you rewatch it that the suspense for the first hour and fifteen minutes is sort of dissipated? No. Well, sometimes, but then you could say something. You could say the same thing about something like the usual suspects or something, couldn't you? Potentially, you know, you kind of <sighs> once you've mm-hmm. seen a film um, and you know the twist, then it is going to affect the way you watch it again. And I, but I still, I can still, you know, I, I, I actually like the twist, and I think there are kind of clues. Um, along the way but it's it's very french isn't it it's philosophical it's almost like a existential slash movie which well and it's very, very french, french in that it has that really really cheesy euro pop song that they're singing along to at the start that you heard yeah. a snippet of in the trailer there a mm. uh, muse i think um they uh, the yeah. one they use muse in the soundtrack is is excellent New, uh, so, newborn isn't it they use mm. Yeah, so yeah, it's a good, well, I love it. I mean, it's one definitely one of my favourite films from um, the last ten years, and so um, thanks for choosing it. And um, as we're we're kind of already at the, let me have a look. Where are we up to? We're about just over the hour mark already, and we're still on our number two. So I shall. I don't want to rush anything, but I shall move it along to my number two, and I'll give myself a little, a tiny little snippet of 2004's Hellbent, um, which I kind of guess was billed as the first ever gay slasher movie, which was a kind of companion piece to the lesbian uh, Make-A-Wish um, from around the same kind of time. And I, I really like Hellbent, regardless of the fact that it's, um, uh, you know, made up of gay characters. Uh, it's a really good fun slash movie um, and it works really really well they've taken the kind of the classic thing of girls being menaced by having hot men being menaced at the LA um, Hollywood West Hollywood Carnival and um, and that so that means a killer in a kind of a devil mask with a sickle um, who's got a very ripped body um, and sort of blends in very well with the festivities um, uh, chasing down a group of four friends who are there to have fun at the, the, um, at the festival, the carnival. And so there's just lots of um, scenes of people being stalked through clubs and there's lots of blood and gore in it as well. Uh, I, you know, it's a little rough around the edges. It's not the, the highest budgeted movie in the world. Um, some of the performances are a little bit kind of broad, but the likable um, characters, and regardless of your sexual preference, uh, it's a you know if you can put that aside, it's a fun film that I think anyone you know with an open mind will really enjoy. If you enjoy slasher movies, then you know I thought Hellbent was one of the best, uh, one of the better slasher movies from the in the mid two uh, thousand. Um, so. Um, how about you guys, Eric? I know you didn't fancy it too much the first time you saw it. First time around, I didn't, but I rewatched it recently, and I thought it was quite good. Actually, there's, I think there's one terrific set piece in it, and it's actually on the poster. It's that the lead character has a glass eye because he had an, uh, he's a cop who had an accident uh, recently or something and lost an eye. But the scene where the sickle scrapes the glass eye mm. is really, really terrific. I think, um, but I think it's good fun. Yeah, I mean, it it does have a very straight to video sheen about it. But you know that's not necessarily a big problem. No, and also, as you said, I mean it, it's it's one of the sort of better films from the era. I mean, there wasn't a huge amount for me to choose from. I mean, I'm, I so other ideas for my top three are coming into my head as we're talking. But I mean, mm. uh, I was find it difficult to find a top three to be honest. Yeah, no, fair enough, fair enough. Mm. And it's kind of the thing. I the other thing I really like about the film is you you it never gives a motive to the killer. You've no idea why the killer. Yes, doing exactly. This. And I think he, the the killer looks terrific. That devil mask is quite eerie. Mm. 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 And he's kind of collecting heads, isn't he? But there's, you just don't know why that is. Is he a gay man doing it, or is he somebody? Is it a homophobic thing, or what is it? But it never actually gives you an answer at the end. And, mm. and to be honest, a, a lot of people don't like that. They want it kind of wrapped up in a neat little bow. But as, as um, I think it's uh, paraphrasing Dara Argento, he once said something along the lines of, um, "You know, you don't always get answers in real life, so why should you always in the movies?" And I think that kind of sometimes can work really well. That ambigu- ambigu- ambiguous, ambiguity, ambiguity, ambiguity. That's the word I'm looking for. How about you? Fun- it's the funnest. It was the funnest movie. It was one of the funnest movies I've ever seen, actually. Yes, yeah. thank you. Nathan, what did you think of Hellbent? I love Hellbent. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a really fun, you know, entertaining movie. Um, you know, I look forward to seeing it, you know, when I first saw the trailer and when I finally got a chance, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't disappointed. I thought that, you know, it's really good. It's like you said, it's got likable characters and, and I'm, uh, I, I agree with you. I like the fact that it's not, you know, wrapped up neatly at the end, you know, I, I like that. Hmm. And Joseph, what are your thoughts as um, as our token straight man? No, I liked um, Hellbent. The only thing I didn't like about it is that I didn't really know who was who. Uh, everyone kind of, you know, looked the same, and I was having trouble, you know, figuring out which character was which. And uh, so it's kind of a little hard to follow in that 
uh, aspect. But other than that, you know, I thought it was kind of atmospheric. I liked the setting. Um, I liked the fact that, you know, it's a rather than, you know, following around the stock characters, it's a bunch of, you know, gay guys. I, I kind of found that, you know, unique. Um, I think the killer's costume is extremely, you know, frightening. Um, and I love the scene where the the uh, thing goes through the to the door. I think it's through the door. Hmm. You, the I think it's the sickle or whatever yeah. it is he's holding. The kill the killer uses, and it about hits the guy's eyeball or something. Hmm. Am I even thinking of the right film? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah. Was, Isn't that the yeah. glass eye scene? That's the glass eye yeah. scene, isn't it? Yeah. It's been so long since I've seen it, but that's the one thing that always stuck out. But yeah, I, I like Hellbent. You know, it's, I don't think it's perfect or anything, but yeah, it's a good time. Do you think Jamie and Scott will like it? No, <laughs> I don't think they'll like it at all, okay, for obvious we'll, reasons. Yeah, we'll, we'll try it on them and uh, report back. But um, well, that's our number twos over. So I hope you enjoyed our number twos, and we're going to go on to our slightly more sophisticated number ones my big un- numero uno is arguably more of a psychological uh chiller i'd call it but um i felt it had enough slasherific content to be considered a slasher film so i picked it and that is of course session nine uh easily the best whatever genre you want to call it um film i've seen in the past 15 years uh it's a film that you know uses sound be it low-key music or even voices to uh really really great effect and the mental asylum setting is kind of unrivaled in creep house aesthetics. Um, I also really like the the cast. You know, even Ginger David Caruso, uh, they all kind of embody that whole working class aspect that you know drove uh, the cast of uh, My Bloody Valentine so well. You know, they feel like real people with real problems, and that helps to accentuate the terror you know that surrounds them. Uh, like I said, you know, sound effects are put to good use. Uh, particularly the disembodied voice of the Simon apparition that haunts the asylum and, uh, big spoiler alert, uh, inhabits one of the characters, you know, turning him into a murderous madman. Um, I'm sure eventually a film will come along to kind of best this one as my numero uno 2K slasher, but uh, I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, session 9 is just a magnificent film. And what do you think, Justin? Yeah, I love Session Nine. It's um, it's a it's a very very good film, and it's very scary as well. It's kind of um, yes, it's very it's, scary actually. It's kind of a real slow burner, but it's got that kind of um, you know, it's I you know, I'd rather watch this a million times over something like Grave Encounters. You know, they kind of where they try and do um, the kind of uh, the abandoned asylum type thing and just throw everything but the kitchen sink at it. This is kind of like a master class in unease and um slow burn scares so it's a bit mm-hmm. like a film like late mungo or the woman in black or those kind of films where it's not it's not all going all out but it's um yeah i, I really really like it it kind of it oozes evil um yeah it's a great film you know what justin before um you just mentioned the woman in black i was talking to nathan the other uh, about a week ago and i was really ashamed that i did not pick that as in my top three um, non slashers for the eighties, and I'm surprised you didn't either. It yeah, really slipped my mind. Yeah, same here. It slipped my mind as well. I suppose, but maybe because it was a TV <laughs> movie. But um, yeah, um, uh, i be what interesting. About, to, what about, sorry, I'm sorry. I was just going to um, say, uh, what about uh, Eric? Have you seen Session Nine? I have seen Session Nine. I do agree. I think it's it's really really good. A slow burn, eerie film. Um, I thought The Machinist is his. Uh, I think that was his follow up film as well. Was really brilliant as well. I haven't seen anything he's done since Brad Anderson. But uh, uh, those two movies, I think, are some of the best of the noughties. Uh I wouldn't th- call Session Nine my favorite of the last fifteen years though, because my number one would be my favorite slasher or horror otherwise. Yeah, fair enough. What about you, Nathan? <laughs> Uh, I love it. I mean, it, it's it's great. You know, it, I can't find any fault with it. I love the setting. Yeah. There you go. That's mm. great. Well, no, thank you very much, Joseph. You're number one. And um, on a slightly different tact, I think we have Nathan's number one coming up. It doesn't get much more brilliant than Psycho Beach Party. It's uh, amazing. It's hilarious. Uh, I might get a little flack for picking it because actually the slashing scenes, um, you know, I mean, even though they're an important part of the movie, you know, it it parodies a lot of movies, you know, slashers and beach party movies. And, you know, I mean, it's it's just one of the many subgenres it it parodies. But, I mean, I still think that it's it's amazing. It's really funny. It's got great acting. Um, 
you know, and I actually felt myself, you know, really interested in the slasher uh, storyline. You know, I, I didn't even guess the killer right, which was weird for me. Usually I'm pretty good at that. What about you, Justin? I love, love, love this movie. And in fact, um, we did have a little um, off screen tussle didn't we over this one because i would have picked yes, it as we well did. but um <laughs> uh yeah no I, I really enjoy it. it's kind of a bit of a lost gem really i don't think it's um it got uh it, it doesn't get the love it deserves and obviously it's a mixture um a knowing mixture of 70s slasher movie but with 60s beach party movie or bit monster uh beach party movie and uh so it's obviously set in the 60s as well but it has that kind of uh the, the 70s slasher movie um, start to it, and I think Charles Bush, who who is the um, uh, the brains behind it, uh, he um, he plays the, like the, um, the the cop, doesn't he? The female cop, uh, and nothing's made of the fact that he's obviously a man playing a female um, detective. But he went on to make uh, a film called Die, Mommy, Die with Jason Priestley. Have you seen that, Nathan? Yes, I have. I didn't like that it's... very much. You didn't? I thought it was really funny too. I'm not as good as Psycho Beach Party mm. at all, but still, you know, funny. I didn't. Th- I didn't find it. I, I was quite disappointed with it. I thought it took itself a bit too seriously. Whereas this is a bit more. I mean, it wasn't. You know, obviously he's playing kind of a Joan Crawford style um, theatre. You know, movie star with um, lusting after uh, Jason Priestley. But um, but it was. Yeah, I didn't think it was a patch on this. But I, I really love Psycho Beach Party, and it's a film. It's a good party film, and it's a film that we kind of. You know, if you want something that people will enjoy. Um, if they come around with a few cocktails, then that's the. It's a film that we put on most often. So yeah, it's a good fun movie, and I'm glad you picked it as your number one. Um, how about you, Eric? Because you didn't like. You don't like it, do you? Well, I don't think I'll be going to any parties at your house, Justin. Sorry, <laughs> you're not invited. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Well, you're not I'm invited to any of my super duper bear parties. <laughs> I would hardly fit in, would I? <laughs> no. Okay. You, you could yeah, you could hide behind a lamppost at your figure. Um, <laughs> No, um, I saw the toing and froing and tussling and fighting over for Psycho Beach Party and I hadn't seen it. So I said, OK, I must seek this out. So I watched it and I didn't care for it one bit, I'm afraid. Uh, what I did like, I did. I love the music, which you can hear in the trailer. I love that style of music and I love the opening credit sequence where it's a go-go dancer and the credits appearing either, either side of her. Um, and it's got two actors in it I was quite intrigued by. One is Kimberly Davis, who used to be in Neighbours. Uh, she used to play Annalise, uh, an Australian actress. And then Kathleen Robertson was in it as well, who was uh, 90210 regular uh, in the late 90s. Um, but I just thought the humour in it was too forced. I thought they were trying to be like a John Waters movie, but failing miserably. Uh, I didn't find it remotely funny. And it didn't have, as, as Nathan said, it's, it, it's more a comedy with a slight sort of slasher element to it. So if the comedy doesn't work for you, you're not going to enjoy the film. Uh, and it didn't work for me, I'm afraid. But having said that, I mean, as with Hellbent, which I didn't like on first viewing, I might this might you know change all with the second viewing. Um, and also, as Joseph was saying, I find a lot of the characters interchangeable. Uh, he was saying about Hellbent, you couldn't keep track of who was who. I was having that same sort of problem with um, Psycho Beach Party. I thought there was a lot of characters, and a lot of them looked kind of similar. Um, so maybe maybe a second viewing might uh, help me out. Okay, well, I'm surprised because I th- would have thought it'd be the film that you'd be right up your alley, as it were. How about you, mm. Joseph? Oh, I, um, I love Psycho Beach Party. You know, even though the um, the Beach Party film is kind of a parody of itself already, so it's kind of you know counterproductive spoofing that. But still, um, I, I really like Psycho Beach Party. I think Lauren Ambrose is fantastic as a uh, Florence Forrest uh, Chicklet, as they call her. Um, Thomas Gibson is the the surfer guy. I think he's hilarious too. He's he's a really good uh, choice for the role. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's a fun film. You know, it it it's it's over the top, but it doesn't really take itself too seriously. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, uh, that's my opinion of the film. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you, Nathan, for your number one. Um, a little bit of descent, and let's see if there's any more. It's uh, Neil Marshall's 2005 film, The Descent, uh, a story of women who go caving in a previously unexplored cave and encounter a race of subhuman, subterranean, cannibal, humanoid type monsters. Um, now, I don't consider this to be a slasher, controversially, but because Justin has reviewed it on Hysteria Lives, the website dedicated to the slasher movie, I am including it, and I don't care how much you uh, protest, Joseph. Um, I think it's got great suspense. It's got uh, it's got got great gore if it, it, it's quite fleeting but i mean it's quite visceral as well um it's got incredible uh 
build-up for a film uh, that's quite modern, it takes about 45, 50 minutes before the monsters actually make their entrance, which is unusual in this day and age. And when they do, they're not CGI um, people leaping around the place uh, like what uh, Will, that Will Smith film, uh, I Am Legend, which had sort of CGI monsters, which were totally pathetic looking. This one goes for men in makeup and it's, it's much more effective. Um, it's got very interesting characters. I mean, there's no absolute goody two-shoes and there's no absolute uh, villain of the piece. You've got Shauna MacDonald as Sarah, who's sort of the final girl, but she herself has her issues and her flaws. I mean, she suffered a personal tragedy at the start of the film. Um, And then there's uh, Natalie Mendoza as Juno, who is the hussy who was having an affair with one of the lady's husbands, but who also is the the one who is most likely to get them out of the trouble they find themselves in. I just think it's interesting that the the character, all the characters have the flaws. There's no um, virginal uh, Jamie Lee Curtis goody two shoes uh, heroine to it. Uh, I also like the sequels. Surprisingly enough, I know it's been slated, but I think what it does well is it has a great sense of continuity with the original. Um, they bring back much of the same cast and crew and it's set literally the moment the first one uh, finishes. So uh, I think they work nicely together. So that's my number one, The Descent. Justin, before you say anything, can, you can cut this out, but um, my phone cut out before. The last thing I heard was, I don't care how much you protest, Joseph. And then it cut yeah. out and then it just cut back on. Why, why would I protest? I, I, didn't, I didn't hear what you said because my phone I was just out. I thought you might protest because it's not a, not a slasher film. No, uh, I, I, didn't, I wouldn't protest at all. I, I always thought it was kind of funny how you and Justin had this back and forth. But, I don't uh, think, I, I see, I wouldn't consider it a slasher film. It's a monster movie to me. I don't see what, where the yeah. slasher element is, but I'm well, glad, I'm glad element, you do element consider is it. The, hmm? Chasing is the ch- people being chased around caves. I mean, I agree that it's a very much borderline and possibly yeah. doesn't really, um, uh, it isn't really a slasher movie. Um, it probably isn't a slasher movie, but I think it has enough in common with the slasher movie to um, for me to include well, it. Well, I'm in. really glad that you did include it on Hysteria Lives because uh, I do think it is my favourite film of any genre in the last 10 years. I just think it's fantastic. Fantastic. Well, even Bob Hoskins does Dallas. Not even Bob Hoskins does Dallas is as good. Okay, mm. right. So. Yeah. What do you What do you think of uh, the Descent, uh, Nathan? Um, I think it is probably in my top five favorite movies of all time, mm. and um, I really wanted to choose it myself, but you chose it already, so Sorry. you usurped that from me too. Mm. And of course, Neil Marshall is going to be making a slasher movie pretty soon. Isn't yes. He? What was it um, called again? Can yes, you remember? Hellfest or Hell Week. Hellfest. Hellfest. Hellfest, which is going to well, set in a um, fairground, isn't it? And it's going to oh, be. Oh, that sounds like, good. Yeah. It's going to be like one of those, um, you know, like Universal Studios. There's like Halloween weekend where they really pull out all the stops, and it's going to be there. But somebody dressed up, you know, if you go to like Universal House of Horrors and you're being chased around by the werewolf. Um, mm. But the idea is actually somebody in there is actually um, dressed up as a monster or a killer and is is a killer. So it's not exactly the most um, original idea because it's been done a few times before. But it's got Gail Ann Hurd, who was um, behind Aliens, um, producer behind it, and Neil Marshall. And obviously, um, so if you argue that uh, and Descent isn't a slasher movie, then we are going to see Neil Marshall presumably do a slasher movie, which will be, um, you know, should be interesting. Mm, I look forward to that. Oh, I can't wait. I hope it's I hope it's good. It sounds so good. It does sound good, doesn't it? So, um, okay. Anything else to say about um, the descent? Yeah, I just uh, want to say, um, I I you know I agree with Nathan and Eric. I think it's one of the best films ever made. Uh, it's I love the claustrophobia. I love um, I, I like the creatures. I like the idea that whatever they are, they've been under so long that they've kind of you know adapted to the to the darkness. So uh, these characters, you know, they have, you know, they can probably try to avoid these things, but since they can pretty much see in the dark, then they're pretty much screwed. The only thing I don't like is um, I don't, I didn't really care for the 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 shock ending. I don't I'm I get those mixed up. It's um, the theatrical one does the shock and then the 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 unrated, I think, does where she's in the cave at the end. Is that That's, correct? That, that, that was only in the states. In in the UK and Ireland, we had the the it ends on the, her in the cave with the birthday cake. See, I like that ending mm. better than I did the shock in the car. Mm. But uh, other than that, it's a really fabulous movie. I think. Well, they, what I do you didn't think? like the Just, sequel. Did you not? I thought the sequel was good fun. 
I mean, I, I think it was fun, but I just I hate the way they chose to end the sequel. I thought that it was just mm. I don't know, stupid. Mm. I thought I it was quite. It. I thought it was quite interesting the way they ended the sequel. It just made everything seem pointless to me. Like you know, like the whole like, um, you know the. Um, Sarah with her daughter and, you know, her wanting to, you know, like have this, you know, had this moment with this other mother with a daughter and they kind of had an understanding and Sarah's point not didn't become, you know, her wanting to get out of the cave anymore. It was to get this woman out of the cave back to her daughter and to just throw all that away. It just made me angry. Hmm. <laughs> all right, well, what do you okay. think of it, Justin, anyway? The what, Descent. The descent? Um, yeah, I love it. You know, it's great. It's a great film. Um, I remember seeing it at the cinema and it works a lot better, I think, at the cinema than it does on DVD, even though it works really well there. But when you're in a dark, you know, a dark environment watching a film. Um, mm. Particularly that sound. scene with the uh, camcorder on infrared and it's, yeah. it, it pans around the cave and spots mm. one of the crawlers, I suppose they're called. That yeah. worked really well in the cinema. Yeah, Everyone brilliant. jumped. Yeah. So, well, no, thank you, Eric. Um, and we just have um, my number one to go. And here it is. We've talked about it a few times before, so we won't dwell on it too much. Cold Prey 2. Um, and we've spoken about these um, uh, Norwegian slash movies, um, Cold Prey 1, 2, and 3. And 1 and 2 are great. Um, I actually prefer number 2. Uh, and I think... Um, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> anyway, I prefer number two because it's kind of like if you haven't seen it, it's um, it's set in the snowy wastes of um, Norway, and uh, the first film has um, a group of um, ski boarders, I think they are, um, um, being uh, or snowboarders, sorry, being um, uh, one of them breaks their legs and they end up in an abandoned hotel which is inhabited by a killer who kills them all apart from the final girl. So very much in the in the kind of um, the style of the the classic slasher movie. But in the sequel, they do exactly what John Carpenter decided to do, or Rick Rosenthal in the original Halloween 2, and is move the action literally to the hospital. And I, it just, it, I just really like it. It's kind of, it, it does everything right that a lot of the American slash movies and British, well, not that there's been many British slash movies in the last 10 years, but um, they, they uh, you know, missed the point. And certainly people like Rob Zombie completely missed the point. If you compare his remake of Halloween 2 to Cold Prey 2, then Cold Prey 2 is definitely the way to go as far as um, a homage to um, the 1981 um, sequel to Halloween. I mean, obviously it's ripping off Halloween, but it does, it goes in its own way, and I really, really liked it. I, in some ways, I'm just a bit it's a shame really that it ends in such a way that you couldn't really bring back the killer and obviously part three is actually a prequel set in the um in the mid 80s but uh yeah they're my kind of probably my favorite um trilogy of slasher movies from the last 10 years and you know i think they're great and i know we discussed them before so we won't dwell on it too much but um eric um your thoughts quickly on the cold Prey films yeah, I, I do like uh, all three of them. I mean, three is, is the weakest, but it's still a pretty darn good watch. Um, yeah, love them. Love all three. Great. And I like you, two would be my favourite. Yeah. Brilliant. And how about you, Nathan? I agree with both of you. Two is my favourite. Um, I do enjoy all three of them. And I love, love, love the way part two ends. That final shot is brilliant. Mm. Okay, and Joseph? Uh, I haven't seen part three. I um, was a little underwhelmed with the first one, but I loved the second one. Uh, uh, like you said, I think it does the whole uh, r- the Halloween 2 thing better than Rob Zombie could ever imagine. So, mm. yeah, that's my opinion. Great. Okay. Well, that's quite an epic top three. We're at the um, one and a half hour mark. So I hope you've enjoyed listening to those. And if you have, and or if you haven't, if you agree or disagree with us on any of those, why don't you let us know? Um, otherwise, it's it's the sound of us you know, flapping our gums to ourselves, which we don't mind doing, do we? But um, it'd be nice to get some feedback from you. So um, do you want to give us the feedback details again, Joseph, before we go into our feature presentation? Yeah, yeah that's um, the.hysteria.continues at gmail.com. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, just search for the Hysteria Continues. We are on Twitter. That's twitter.com forward slash. And what is that rustling? It's not me. It's not it's me. Not, you sure we're not Nathan. opening a Kit Kat? Well, excuse me. I'm on an <laughs> iPad and I get uncomfortable. I have restless leg syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> you have you have those tiny dancers. You have those giant dancers legs. That's true. But, uh, Anyway, you can find us on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash THC underscore podcast. And you can leave us a voicemail. That's 858-233-9281. And that's how you get 
reach out and touch us. Yes, indeed. So, AT&T would say, as AT&T would say. Indeed. So, yeah, reach out and touch us individually. Yes, we would please, like that. So please. Please, please do. Okay, we are going to move on to our feature. Humongous. Six people stranded, quartered, hunted. Because here on Dog Island, something evil has been growing for 30 years. Take it God help us indeed. <laughs> uh, that's the trailer to Humongous, which is Paul Lynch's uh, 1982 follow-up to his rather successful film Prom Night, uh, which was released in 1980. Uh, the film follows the fortunes of six young folk who find themselves shipwrecked on Dog Island, the scene of a vicious rape 36 years earlier. And uh, this resulted in the birth of a monster who has remained hidden from mankind until now. And that really is all there is to the plot. It literally only needs the sentence, six kids on an island menaced by a monster to explain it. And that is probably the biggest flaw with Humongous, is that for a while the setup is quite fun and it has some fun interaction between the characters early on. The plot is flimsy and far too linear and sort of never once fears from its quite ho-hum trajectory. Uh, the script is really an example of writing by numbers with nothing even resembling a surprise happening at all in its sort of 90 three minutes running time um there's a moment towards the end which could have been interesting except they were beaten to the punch by friday the 13th part two about 12 12 months earlier uh the pre-credit sequence is is quite nasty and makes you think you're going to see something um far more vicious than what transpires uh the pre-credit sequence of course is the rape of ida um who is raped by a guy the rapist is then mauled by some dogs and ida finishes off the job by clobbering him over the head with some rocks um and so it's it's fairly strong um but the rest of the film fails to live up to the strength of the the pre-credit sequence having said that there's lots of fun to be had particularly in the characters of carla who's played by janet baldwin and the fantastic joy bouchelle as Donna. Uh, every moment she's on screen, the, the film is enlivened uh, with her portrayal of this ditzy character with a uh, penchant for taking her blouse off. Uh, you know, she dances seductively in her bikini in a really, really fantastic way, pouting at Eric. Um, and then she, at one stage, of course, she famously goes off collecting berries and gathering them in her cleavage. We've discussed that uh, just last week, actually, on the podcast. Um, and her interaction with Carla is fun. There's some kind of bitchiness between, uh, or bitterness between the two of them. Um, um, there's an exchange uh, that you heard, would have heard in the opening of the podcast where she says, from a distance, I could hardly see your stretch marks. Um, so Donna, as a character, is wonderful. And she, it, it's a shame that sort of halfway through the film, she, uh, well, is killed, basically. Um, because the, the, the leads, Janet Julian as Sandy and David Wallace as Eric, are a bit dry. And it's not really the fault of the actors as such. Um, but their characters are a bit too serious and slightly one-dimensional. Um, you know, David, David has that fantastic new romantic haircut, though, that he sported in Mortuary. Um, and Janet Julian has a wonderful, wonderful 80s headband that uh, Olivia Newton-John would be proud of. Uh, you know, so both are good actors, but they're just given so little to do, um, particularly David Wallace. And I know that Nathan often says that secondary characters sometimes, you know, are far more interesting to him than the leads. And I think that's a case for me with Humongous. I think Joy Bouchelle's character Donna is the most interesting thing in the film. And once once she is killed off, it uh, kind of peters out for me. Uh, in terms of direction, uh, I think Paul Lynch has definitely uh, done a better job here than he did on Prom Night. I think 
although I think Prom Night is a more entertaining film, um, the horror sequences in Prom Night, bar the beheading sequence at the end, uh, I thought were handled rather clumsily. Um, they were suspenseless and, you know, showed the hallmarks of someone unaccustomed to the horror genre. Uh, I thought in Humongous, he injects the horror with a bit more vigour. Uh, you know, even if the results are still far from Carpenter or Hitchcock. Uh, I like the way the there's lots of backlighting of the monster and, you know, there's uh, plenty of reason for that. And I've learned in um, Starburst, an old UK magazine dedicated to sci-fi and horror, they had a spread on Humongous back in 1982, which shows a very uh, well-lit picture of the title character. And you can see why they decided to keep it in the shadows because the makeup is, well hideous it's disastrous it looks like the work of a 12 year old uh, I, i'm sure we can put that still up on facebook for people to see hopefully um but i mean it's shockingly bad uh, special effects in that respect and i mean because the, the film looks fine apart from that i mean the shipwreck sequence at the start is a bit uh rubbish looking to be <laughs> to be honest um the waters look unbelievably calm uh and there seems they only seem to sort of minorly bump onto these rocks and the the whole boat explodes um, you know, in that very famous early 80s action TV series style. Um, so I'm, I'm being quite negative on Humongous, but there are parts of it I do like. I mean, the film has a great uh, opening credit sequence, I think. It's really, really stylish. You've got these authentic looking photos from the 40s and 50s that have been um, hand painted with, you know, bits of colour in them. And, you know, that wouldn't be a miss in a mega budget drama starring Sandra Bullock or Meryl Streep or something. Um, it gives it a touch of class that it probably doesn't deserve. Uh, but, I mean, on the whole, I think that the first half of the film I found quite fun. Second half, um, once the interesting characters like Carla and Donna are disappear from the plot, I think it loses its momentum and it, it peters out. <laughs> so, Nathan, Humongous, what do you think? Um, I like Humongous, but I actually kind of disagree with you, Eric, a little bit, because I think mm-hmm. Prom Night is better in every conceivable way. I even think the horror scenes in Prom Night are much better than the ones in Humongous. Mm-hmm. Something about the death scenes and stuff in Humongous seems so lazy to me. Like, the death scene on the beach of the, the two, like, how did Donna die? What, she just got thrown on a rock? I mean, that, that just seems so, I don't know, like... A big thing I love about slasher movies are the the murder set pieces, and I just felt Humongous really dropped the ball when it comes to its death scenes. Um, and like you said, like the killer's makeup, <laughs> the, I'm glad they kept him in the shadows because that made him scarier. But, you know, the, the whole thing with uh, that picture you posted on Facebook, I was like, wow, you know, I think I could make that. And uh, I'm far from a makeup artist. Um I do. Uh, I love the setting, and you know, I do like the killer definitely. And you know, I, I do like you know, say like the final chase scene where she hides, I guess, in that little boathouse. I thought that was a good scene too. Um, I, I think it's a it's a good movie, but you know, it's you know, it, to me, it's kind of one of the more average '80s slasher movies. You know, it's 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 good. It's it's bad. It's it's just kind of in between, I guess. I think lazy lazy is a great word actually because I mean the 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 plot feels very uh, lackluster and it, it has a very sort of you know lazy tempo to it. Um, but I, I mean I, the the prom night comparison. I think prom night looks the the horror sequences look very shoddy and, and edited quite um, amateurishly. Whereas I think it, there's a more polished look to Humongous, even if it's if it's not as entertaining. Um, even Wendy's chase scene. Yeah, I find Wendy's chasing sort of suspenseless, to be honest. Oh, really? <gasps> really good. I thought it was great. Uh, I do. I do think the, the the way they set up the beheading on the the catwalk at the very end is really really good. But um, the rest of the horror in Prom Night, like particularly like the van sequence in Prom Night, I think is really really bad. No. Uh, I like it too. I got to say, uh, I, I I love them all. I can't. I mean, I, just I, I do, I do, I do love the 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 non horror moments in Prom Night, though. I think it's fantastic. The bitchy dialogue, all that type of stuff, yeah. And Jamie Lee Curtis is fantastic in it, and I think it has a brilliant ending. Um, oh, I would say though that uh, you know, kind of getting back on Humongous, I agree with you about the secondary characters. I actually found Miss Barry Cleavage and guy <laughs> on uh, the beach. I found them two to be way more interesting than the final guy and girl. Yeah. They're so boring. Yes, they were really, really boring. Anyway, uh, Humongous Joseph, what do you, Humongous Joseph, what do you think? 
<laughs> yeah, um, that's right. Um, I, I agree with Nathan. I think prom night is better in every conceivable way. Um, you know, I watched the new DVD of Humongous recently, and I'm sorry. It's just a minuscule experience, if, if I can be as generous as I can. Uh, the problem is the characters. You know, they're rather bland and uninter- in it, uninteresting. Excuse me. Um, even the final girl who kind of, you know, apes Amy Stills, Jenny from Friday the 13th Part 2, and especially the obnoxious mullet head. I think his name was Nick, maybe. Was yes. it Nick? Mm-hmm. Uh, the guy who causes the shipwreck. I mean, I hated this character so much, and we don't even get a good death scene for him. And, you know, therein lies another one of the film's uh, many problems. The death scenes are dull and lifeless. You, I mean, you have a large cast stranded, stranded on an isolated in an isolated setting, and... There's a hulking figure, you know, destroying them one by one, and this is the best you could do. You know, um, people often, you know, talk about films like, uh, you know, Island of Blood or uh, House of Death, you know, having, you know, being crappy. But, you know, they have smaller budgets, and, they, and you know, they at least try to, you know, go for broke. Humongous obviously has a decent budget, and th- th- it doesn't really even do anything with it. I mean, you know... Uh, I like the setting. Um, the atmosphere is pretty good, you know, what you can see of it. Uh, I like the fiery finale, but I'm sorry. Uh, Humongous is not a film I'd watch again anytime soon, if ever. Uh, I'll be generous and give it a 3 out of 10, maybe. But, you know, like I said, I'm being generous. Mm. Well, my, Just don't my, care for it. All right. Well, my rating probably would be a more generous 6, maybe, out of 10. Uh, I do oh, agree I with you. Uh, OK, well, I do agree with you about the character of Nick. I mean, I took a note saying that he really reminds me of the character of Glazer from The Burning, which I know you watched last night. Um, See, the you, thing about Glazer, though, he's so over the top, I think he's kind of funny, whereas this guy's just hateful. And Yeah, but the thing and the thing with Glazer is you, you get a really spectacular demise for him, whereas you don't with Nick. Nick, you know, you don't see him being killed and he's killed quite early off, where early on, whereas if they killed him off later and made him more and more obnoxious, it probably would have, you know, given a sort of, you know, a great release also, to the audience. Yeah, also, not to go off on a burn, the burning tangent, but let me interrupt you. Um, we watched The Burning last night, as I said in our recently scene, but the, uh, another thing about Glazer is that um, when he's when he has sex with uh, Sally in the woods, you actually see a kind of a insecure side to him where, where she tells him, you know, basically he didn't do very well, and he's like, you know, he kind of has that, you know, he feels bad about it. So, he, you know, he has some kind of a, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, he's, like I said, insecure. So, you know, you kind of understand why he's such a jerk. But this guy, he's just, Nick, he's just a he's just a prick. I mean, he's an asshole through and through. Complete, and yeah. I really, Yeah, I really wanted to see a good death scene for him because he deserved it, and we didn't. He screams, and it just cuts off. And I, that really, you know, irritated me to no end. You know, it's, it's so true because Glazer, um, like you said, you see that like vulnerable, like insecure side of him, and you kind of think that you know maybe that's why he's such a you know a bully is like he's actually just insecure with himself, like he has you know those issues. But Nick and Humongous, like he just seems like he's a prick just to be one. You know, mm-hmm. like you don't mm-hmm. really know why he acts the way he does. He's just mean and obnoxious for no reason. Well, maybe there's a backstory where he couldn't get lubricated rubbers either, so that's why he's mean. <laughs> <laughs> I asked for yeah. lubricated rubbers. <laughs> that was my New York accent, by the way. It was <laughs> very convincing. It was very convincing. Yes. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Justin, what do you think of Humongous? Uh, do you well, like I'm Do you pro- like all things Humongous? I love all things Humongous. Yes, um, I've got a lot of time for them. Um, <laughs> what I would say is kind of I'd like it a lot more than um, some of us do. Uh, I still think I, I agree with pretty much everything that's been said. I think when I reviewed it, reviewed it originally on. Um, Hysteria Lives. It's one of those films I'd seen um, many times in the video store back in the 80s, and I didn't, um, uh, I, I never hired it. But I've got the um, the VHS copy from the Embassy, uh, which has got the um, the image of the eyeball on looking through the hole on the door, like a glory hole kind of um, thing, I imagine. What's and, a glory um, hole, Justin? Sorry, what's a glory hole? What's a glory hole, Justin? It's when you look through and you see something beautiful. <laughs> what, like a cop? <laughs> No, sorry, no, like a lovely dress or something, or a, like a uh, like a My Little Pony or something. Oh, all right, sorry. And then you get like a finger of fudge. <laughs> Actually, um, it's where you get shot with an arrow, as in Bloody Birthday, how they would uh, demonstrate. That exactly. You get shot exactly. with an arrow through a glory hole. Yes. Yeah, or you could get something else in your eye, like in um, a Serbian film. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's well, a great movie. By humong- the way. Coming back to humongous things, um, yeah. I did. I you know I kind of watched it um, uh, again, and I sort of I didn't. 
you know, I agree with everything that's been said. I think, to be honest, I think it was quite a lazy film for William Gray and Paul Lynch. I think they'd, um, you know, uh, we come on to a little bit of the background stuff a little bit later, but um, uh, William Gray, uh, I think obviously someone said to them, like, Prom Night made loads of money, um, Paul and William. Why don't we do another horror film? They're going, okay, well, what do we do? And and then William Gray said, I heard some kids say the word humongous. That sounds like a good name for a film. What can we do about it? And it, so it was pretty kind of identikit kind of thing or... Um, you know, they they basically took Scooby Doo as a um, you know as, as the uh, the main thing of how they're going to put it together, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, and it, I think there's a lot of Scooby Doo um, comparisons with it because you've got you know you've got all Thelma and you've got um, you know all the different characters are pretty much like Scooby Doo. You know, you've got Janet um, Janet Baldwin um, who is Thelma, obviously with the Ve- big glasses. Thelma. Sorry. Velma, not Thelma. Oh, sorry, Thelma. Velma. Thelma Ve- with a V. Thelma. <laughs> okay. Thelma, but yes, exactly. No, but... Ve- Velma with a V. Velma with a yeah. V. Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, I don't... Anyway, talk about being picky. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, what would the baby Jesus say? Look, the, the it... Scooby-Doo fan club would be on our backs if we didn't get that right. Okay, well, I do apologize. I'm, I'm being molested by um, Gilbert here, who is my cat, the other cat. So I'm just being surrounded by cats today. But I agree, like, Nick is, like, the grand prick of the, the thing. I mean, he's just kind of, like, it's bizarre that it had a character who was so unlikable, um, but quite funny. And I think probably my favourite bits of the film are actually the in the house um, before they leave, when they're all, like, bitchy. And th- they've got that great dialogue, isn't it? It's like, paraphrasing, it sort of says, um, you know, she may be, you know, have gr- a, a big wardrobe and be, you know, incredibly, fa- um, you know, fashionable, but life's still hard for her or something along those lines. And it's kind of like those kind of things that kind of make it that kind of really good, fun 80s kind of feel to it. And you have to ask yourself, why on earth did these people go on holiday together? Surely this must be the worst holiday in, in ever. You know, none of them well, like each other. Well, about, like if somebody came up to me and pointed a loaded rifle at my head, I would yeah. not be inclined to go on holiday with them, even if they were my brother. No. And no. also, you have to ask yourself why um, uh, Janet Julian doesn't want to talk about this. And I found, um, I, I, we'll come on to sort of talking about some of the, um, uh, you know, we tried to get, I know you tried to get some interviews, Eric, didn't you? Mm. And nobody. Yeah, I, I tracked down um, four of the main cast, but no, yeah. nobody got back to me. Well, I, I found a thing on Janet Baldwin, now Janet Lansbury. She works with um, with uh, children. And she kind of Janet, Janet Julian is now Janet Lansbury. Oh, sorry, Janet Julian, sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, Janet Julian is now Janet Lansbury, yeah. And um, on her website it says, some, some recognise my racy role as Christopher Walken's mole in the film King of New York. I'm one of the few actresses who can brag about co-starring with a chimp, BJ and the Bear. Killing a monster in the movie, movie Humongous and falling in love with a Swamp Thing on TV. Does this sound glamorous? So she obviously has a sense of humour about her um, mm. her kind of career, but obviously not enough to want to talk to us about it. No. But um, I, I kind of, yeah, I, I don't know. I just didn't... It, it's, it, it's too much to buy the numbers, really. Um, there's too many plot holes. And Whoa, is that a cat flushing a toilet? Was it? What was this? What was that noise? I'm sorry, that was me. I was moving my chair. Oh, right. Uh-huh. I didn't realise how loud it would be. It all feels going wrong. <laughs> But, anyway, uh, yeah, continue, I mean, Justin. Sorry, thank you. Um, I, I don't, I don't mind Humongous. I quite enjoy it, but I kind of, I just feel like it's a bit of a slasher movie on autopilot. Um, mm. And it's got a great vintage. Um, it's kind of a bit of a Johnny Come Lately almost to the thing because it was released, it was made in eighty one, but then kind of missed the slasher movie, you know, heyday, and sort of um, didn't do particularly good business in um, nineteen eighty two. Uh, I don't know. It, yeah, it's. Yeah, I don't know. I hate to say it's a bit of a meh, but it's. I don't hate it as much as. I not hate it, but don't. Um, Joseph doesn't like it, but I kind of gave it. My original review on his series lives was um, uh, two and a half stars, which is like five out of ten. And I would say that pretty much it's that. It's middling, mm. really. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, it was, as you say, released in, in June 82 in the States. Uh, it, I couldn't find a release date for the UK, but it was uh, certified by the BBFC in the summer of 1983 with seven <coughs> seconds of cuts. And then it had 63 seconds of cuts for its 1987 video release, which sounds bizarre because uh, we're all going off the uncut uh, DVD release that came out recently from Scorpion. And uh, there doesn't seem to be anything in there, maybe apart, apart from the rape scene that would justify uh, being censored. I think Janet um, uh, Janet uh, Baldwin's um, death scene was a little bit yeah crazy. her squashy skull screen uh, yeah. death, that scene even but that's the only gory kill in the movie isn't it really it it really is yeah 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 
I mean, mm. that kind of goes on. That kind of lingers a bit. But I, I, I mean, presumably, um, Eric, you've listened to the commentary, haven't you, on the new? I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a few things I picked up from that, as you say, Paul Lynch got the the, the title of Humongous just from hearing it, some kids say it. I mean, I did. Yeah. God knows what they were were, talking about. Uh, So that was always the intended title of the film because I was Mm. wondering if Humongous might have been a uh, title that was forced onto the film after it was made. Um, It was shot in in Canada. Um, It was... uh, Actually, Paul Lynch, did you know, was offered uh, a Charlton Heston movie after Prom Night. Mm. Uh, But he ended up uh, doing... uh, He ended up uh, directing it himself, actually, uh, Charlton Heston. It was called Mother Load. I'd never heard of it, but it starred um, Kim Bassinger and Nick (coughs) Mancuso. I don't know if anyone has seen Mother Load, but that was apparently intended to be a Paul Lynch movie. Um, He shot a promo for Deadly Eyes, the Leslie Donaldson rap movie, Mm. uh, for them to sell in Cannes. Uh, he didn't actually go on to direct the movie itself, but he shot sort of the promo reel to get the investors interested in it. Um, and it, the, this was the really surprising thing I got off the commentary was that the berry gathering in cleavage thing that Donna does um, was inspired by the writer's wife, the writer being uh, William Gray, because um, his wife apparently used to go around collecting berries in her blouse. Oh, really? I don't know. Sorry. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be boasting about that in a DVD commentary. <laughs> no. Well, maybe it's his ex-wife. Maybe it is his ex-wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, a few other uh, behind-the-scenes things I have are that uh, Gary Robbins, who plays Humongous, also played Sawtooth in Wrong Turn, which we were talking about earlier. Okay. Um, uh, Paige Fletcher, who was the rapist in the opening credit, uh, the pre-credit sequence, went on to play the Hitchhiker in the series of the same name. I don't know. Do you remember the Hitchhiker, Justin? It used to play a lot yes. night on ITV. I don't remember actually. No. It was an anthology. It was kind of like Twilight Zone, except right. it was really, really sexy. It, it came on the USA network here. Yeah. And every every like um episode was like some guy and some woman getting down to their underpants and then something weird happening. Yeah, the uh, mm-hmm. the hitchhacker came on in mm. the USA. Yeah. Uh John Wildman who plays the horrible horrible No, Nick. nothing. Sorry. Sorry. Hold on. Let, let <laughs> I said no, start. nothing, nothing. What what did you say again? I didn't I pick up on it. I said the hitchhiker came on USA. Oh, Ooh. yeah, that's a very good one. Wouldn't you agree, Matron? Thank you. I Thank would you. agree. Mm-hmm. Um, John Wildman, who plays the horrible, horrible mullet Nick, um, also had a small role in the 1983 slasher movie Skullduggery, which you yes, have to admit that. is worse than humongous. <laughs> no um, wonder I don't like the guy. <laughs> Uh, William Gray also wrote screenplays for The Changeling, which was a pretty decent 1980 um, ghost movie, uh, Prom Night, of course, and also a couple of episodes of The Hitchhiker starring um, Paige Fletcher. Uh, Janet Julian, as um, Justin was saying, is now known as Janet Lansbury and teaches parenting and child development skills in Hollywood, California. And that sounds like uh, Nathan moving his feet again, is it? No, I am dead still. Okay. (laughs) I I apologise for accusing you. Um, Janet Baldwin now makes designer handbags if you're interested, Justin um, they range from 120 to 275 dollars <laughs> did you try and get hold of her? I did, via and that website was, but she didn't get back to me it was, yeah, she, yeah. I didn't realise that, she was also in Ruby uh, the Exorcist ripoff is, isn't it? Ruby is an Exorcist clone am I right? yes, well yeah. kind of, it's kind of um, it's got Pippa Laurie in it as well isn't it it's kind of it's um, set in the drive-in it's kind of psychic, almost like Carrie. Maybe it's a Carrie ripoff. Oh, was it? I can't really remember. I have mm. seen it, I know. But she's also in um, De Palma's Phantom of the Paradise. Okay. And she was also, she started alongside Linda Blair in Born Innocent, a 1975 TV movie. Eric, uh, I want to know why. I want to know why you would uh, find it incumbent that, that Justin would be interested in, in designer handbags. Oh, well, I don't know. I just, I'm just jumping to conclusions, maybe. Okay. Handbag. Are, are, are you interested in designer handbags, Justin? Not really, no. Oh. Um, mm. I've got I was he's not a Versace there. gal. Oh, handbag, yeah. Oh. He does know who Jimmy Choo is, Oops. though. Oops. Yeah. Sorry, it's a, it's just yeah. a picture fell over. It's cats again, so. Yeah. <laughs> Those cats are destructive. He's destroying <laughs> your life. It's like fucking Godzilla. Yeah. It's kind of... mm. uh, Joy Bouchelle, who plays, who is the highlight of the film for me, as I said, playing Donna. She was also in Terror Train. She played a character called Pet. Uh, she also went on to appear in Cronenberg's remake of The Fly. Um, and she's the character who is, you know, told one of horror's most famous lines, Be Afraid, Be Very Afraid, by uh, Gina Davis. Um, and did you know that a remake of Humongous came out in 1988? 
No. No, it's called it's called Big and it stars Tom Hanks. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. And of course Tom See, Hanks was in He Knows You're Alone, so yes, it's the, there we um, go. You know, the slasher movie connections come thick okay. and fast. Just to clarify, Big is not a remake of Humongous. No. I made it up. I'm sorry. You're evil, Eric. Yeah. Does so do you have any be- I know you're a behind the scenes encyclopedia, Justin. Do you have any more? Well I do, but before I do I'll ask uh, Joseph and Nathan because I don't want to um you know Nathan, have you got anything for us? No. Oh, I knew that was coming. How about you, Joseph? Yeah, the only thing I found out is that the title was kind of, uh, they didn't really know what to name the film. So uh, the producers kind of, uh, one night they time traveled into the future while I was asleep and they measured my penis and then they went back in time and that's how they got the title. All right. Because <laughs> they, they didn't mention that on the commentary. Yeah, and the film's well, of not course called... they didn't. The film's not called Tiddly. Because if they <laughs> if they tell everybody they have a time machine, then the government will be after them. They can't do that. Oh, that's see, I didn't think about that. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That, that's quite fascinating. That wasn't on the um, that wasn't on the uh, thingy, was it? The soundtrack. No, uh, the, no. Uh, the thingy. The thingy. The thingy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm looking at my notes if you don't mind. But I, I will. I've actually got some something here. So um, it was. Well, uh, uh, Joseph had something as well. Well, not really, but. Um, <laughs> You actually have something? Is that what you're saying? Is it is it humongous? It is massive, and I've got quite a lot. I've got I've got pages full. So anyway, I shall move on. Um, obviously, the film was supposed to be um, because obviously it was supposed to be set in America, um, and Paul Lynch said that he thought the best thing to do was set in Thousand Islands, which is in between America and Canada. It's kind of like in the big lake. What is it? Lake? I don't know what it is, but some big lake. Mongo. Um, sorry, M- Mongo. <laughs> Mungo, like, not Lake Mungo. Lake, Lake Mungo. Oh, for goodness sake. Um, <laughs> I want to know. I'm just clutching at straws. <laughs> yes. Well, he said he said that they he thought they wanted um, more slash and gash. So, um, but it didn't quite turn out. <laughs> That's what he calls it, isn't it? On the, he says on the commentary, slash and gash. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I just say what I see, for goodness sake. Um, oh, now, the head of Embassy didn't want to release it when they actually made it. But although Prom Night had made a huge amount of money, um, Embassy were not... Will you please pipe down at the back? <laughs> you said the sake, this isn't a carry on movie. <laughs> I think I'm Joseph's, sorry, go Joseph's drinking. Oh my god, you can make an innuendo out of everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just, I know. I'm just gig, my giggle box is turned on. I'll turn it off. Okay. Are, have we calmed down now? I'll Children. try. Yes. Yes, okay. And I'll, I shall I shall carry on and I shall try not to um to stop again this time. So okay, well uh, you know, trying to put on my um, my sober head, I shall carry on and saying the head of embassy didn't want to release it, and he didn't like the film's gore. So it kind of so they were told um, from the start really they didn't actually want much gore in it, which is probably why the film hasn't got much gore at all. Now embassy basically um, shat all over the film, and when the film came out, it got a, a very patchy release. And um, they talk about in the commentary about how the um, the imagery of the uh, humongous uh, spelt out in the little blocks, the children's blocks, with the monster looking over a crib, um, was a bit. It didn't really work, and I, you know I probably would agree with that to some de- um, some degree. And I think I sent round some pictures of the Italian artwork, which is much better, isn't it? Mm, really good. Really good. Which kind of shows something, like, something we can put up on uh, our Facebook. Site. I like the artwork with the monster in the crib. I think well, it's I don't fantastic. Mind it, but yeah, I don't mind it. Um, what I was going to say was obviously Paul Lynch. I mean, this has been an oft repeated story, but Paul Lynch kind of basically wanted to get in on the Halloween and the success of it, and he went to meet with it was Erlen Yablins. I can't remember, but he um, uh, he had an idea of a killer slasher gynecologist. And he wanted to make a movie called Don't See the Doctor, which um, um, everyone was appalled by. But you just imagine if that had been made, it would have been amazing. But it didn't happen. So he made Prom Night uh, famously by <coughs> after seeing a, uh, a picture of um, uh, on a billboard in Los Angeles of uh, advertising Prom Night um, attire. Um, and then obviously he went on to um, to make Humongous. And I think it's the last kind of horror slash movie he, he kind of ever made. Um the some of the stuff that um, I, I the reviews at the time were not kind. Put it that way. Um, Janet Maslin in the New York Times when the film was reviewed in June the twelfth, nineteen eighty two, I quote: "She says if you've ever if you've ever seen a single horror movie, it was probably better than Humongous, which opened yesterday at Lowe's State and other theaters. If you've never seen one, don't start here." Um, so that's not really a glowing review of Humongous. 
and also Dan Geyer, who is our kind of every is a kind of go to for slagging off horror movies, slash movies, especially in the um, Chicago Herald, I believe, on the seventh of July, nineteen eighty two. He's, it's titled Humongous Ghosts to the Dogs. Um, and just he ends by saying, with Humongous, maniac movies have finally gone to the dogs. And now, Dan Guy was one of the critics at the time who hated, hated, hated slasher movies with a vengeance. Um, and he didn't, he, you know, he said that Halloween was good, but even gave Halloween a bad review. I mean, he really, really hated them. Um, wow. But just to quote a little bit more from him, <coughs> he says, um, Now I ask you, what kind of movie would have the title Humongous? Good guess, um, but softcore porn prince Russ Meyer has nothing to do with this maniac on a loose romp that owes a great deal to the visual style of Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, Paul Lynch, in the commentary, basically does say that the um, the film, I kind of guess, is inspired by Texas Chainsaw Massacre in a, in a lot of ways, and he kind of admits that, so that's kind of kind of good of him. But um, but the the film um, the review just goes on to rubbish the um, the film in uh, all sorts of different ways, and it has a picture of uh, uh, Janet Baldwin um, when she sees a severed head in the in the pond as it comes up. Um, I've got a few other bits. Was anything else anyone wanted to say? No. Mm, no. Just just oh, I've got I'll one thing more to say. That was a good shot. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, look, I'm leaking. <laughs> <clears throat> Indeed. I was going to say the. Uh, the um, the film cost two million dollars to make, uh, and when I looked at Variety, it said that um, it kind of it seems to be a mixed message about whether or not it did well. I think it kind of may have made back its budget, but probably not by much. Um, it says things like um, uh, Annie Bland, one hundred forty five thousand or near, humongous, minuscule in third week at eleven theaters, uh, things like that. Do 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 do, and says. Um, uh, without invention, sex or graphic violence, humongous as a little hope of generating more of an initial interest from fans should disappear by early summer. That was um, that was uh, um, the variety basically rubbishing the film, and um, it did pretty much. I think it's one of those kind of also ran films that didn't really make that much money at the time. Uh, I don't know. Has anyone else got anything else? Um, any background stuff on the film? Uh, no, I don't. I'm just looking at um, Starburst's uh, issue. 47 here, which is where so, so. you get to see a good look at the uh, makeup of Humongous. Um, and it just like says Russo, Starburst. It's, it's actually a preview rather than a review of the film. It says <clears throat> uh, Starburst presents a special photo preview of a new stateside horror picture entitled Humongous, uh, spelt differently. Nothing to do with Mad Max 2, we think. I'm not sure what that reference is. Is there a character called Humongous in Mad Max 2? Not I'm aware of. So, no. Yeah. Uh, it has no British opening date. All we have is the pics, courtesy of our hardworking Hollywood correspondent, Bill Warren. And yeah, you get to see a good look at Humongous, which we'll put on the Facebook site. And it looks like, I think it looks like something from a 1950s low budget movie. It's what really you bad. And you, you say it had a budget of two million. I think it should have a better looking monster than that. Well, you can see why they kept the um, the killer's face out of it, can't you? Because they were saying Completely, the yeah. we we did it because we want to show the the, um, the face of the killer. We want to keep it in, you know, keep you in suspense. But really, as I said, it, it looks like Demis Roussos, doesn't it? On a bad day. And, uh, well, um, what's that? You've, you you describe it quite funny on um, on Hysteria Lives. Something like a potato like with a fried potato. egg. It's yeah, a potato <laughs> with a boiled egg balanced on top. That's after he gets burned. <clears throat> and that um, actually, that, yeah, that's actually quoted in. Um, in the Canadian horror movie book, isn't it? Was it that no, line? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, in, I think it uh, is. From With... What's it called? From Within? From Within? Is that the name of the book? Um, they came, they from, came within. from Within. That's it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, indeed. I kind of trying to. I'm sort of kind of lost track now. What are we had? What are we talking about? Humongous, yes, again. We're talking, um, yes. <laughs> uh, is there anything else about put, the film put, that we haven't Step discussed? away from the red wine. Uh, unfortunately, there's no red wine left. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, no. Uh, no, I've no, I've nothing less to say on Humongous apart from the fact that I stand by my six out of ten. I think it is, it has a good op- uh, first half and then kind of a lackluster second half. Well, one thing to, to say, actually, we haven't said, of course, is talking about the um, the films. Uh, uh, you know how dark it was on video. Yes, and um, and the new DVD, which we talked about a few times. You know, we've, in the last couple of shows, we've said that it's a much better. Um, uh, picture isn't it but it's quite pixelated it's not the best uh, version of humongous we're likely to see but it certainly looks better than it has done and you can actually see what's going on towards the end 
Well, see, I don't yeah. know if it's um, I don't know if it's telev- different televisions, but I didn't notice any pixelation on the DVD at all. Well, what what happened with me actually about that, Joseph, was I've watched it now on a DVD player and on a Blu-ray player. And on a Blu-ray player, I found it was much more, uh, the defects were much more prominent with the upscaling. Uh, watching on a DVD player, I didn't find it too bad, actually. Mm. Mm. Okay. But yeah, it is, I mean, it is considerably brighter because, I mean, I for a long time, all I had was well, the see, we, co- we watched it on a Blu-ray player as well, and it wasn't pixelated, oh, so I don't, harsh, I don't know. Yeah. I just don't understand. I don't know. I, I think it might have to do with the uh, resolution on televisions, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I, just mm. different for different people. But, I mean, as somebody who grew up watching horror films in the late 80s and 90s and having to put up with fifth-generation bootleg VHSs, I mean, I can, I'm quite happy to settle for what they've done with the humongous DVD. You know, it's not a big issue for me. No, no, I mean, it looks good. It looks good. It's just kind of like you, you think if they're going to do like a, a slap up version on, on <coughs> DVD. And of course, um, you know, I've, I've said before, but I did offer them my humongous uh, memorabilia, which they didn't <coughs> use. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe it's because I had nothing to do with the film at all. I don't know. But the, uh, <laughs> but the other Justin, thing. Justin, did you drink a humongous bottle of wine? Why can yeah. you tell? Yes, yes, we can. Oh dear! No, you are so sloshy. It's it's unprofessional. I'm a bit sloshy. Well, no, because I I had some some gin and I poured myself a very big um, uh, thing, a slug of gin. So I do apologise if I'm drunk. I'm not that oh. drunk. <laughs> no drunker than uh, I don't know. Uh, slightly Oliver Reed. Person. Oliver Reed, exactly. And look what look what fantastic things he did, like on the word. Yes, if you remember yeah. that. But one thing oh, I was yes. going to say: <laughs> one, one talking about drunk people. The um, thing we haven't talked about is the killer, and one of my favourite stories in the commentary is saying that the the guy who played the killer always used to drink loads of beer and then got a bit drunk, and um, he loved going out and scaring people as they were driving past. He kept popping up at windows and waving at people, and they almost crashed a few times. And also there, uh, what an was, asshole! <laughs> yeah, what crap yeah. makeup they'd say. <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. But I also love the fact that they said that he was drunk at the end when they were doing the flame bits. And he was flashing, flashing around, and he was kind of like, and Janet Julian was kind of like, woo, and jumping, you know, jumping around, and he was trying to get her, and then he, um, he got singed, didn't he? Because he was too drunk to do the stunt. Yes, properly. yeah, yeah, because he had he. They say on the commentary because he was so drunk he couldn't really feel the full force of the flames. Exactly. So, like when he sobered up, he, he discovered he had some burns. But yes, well, hopefully when I sober up, I won't have to, you know. Hopefully, it won't be too bad when we listen to back to this podcast. Yes, you'll just have Chris. cat hair all over you. Well, I will. I've got a cat between my legs at the moment. <laughs> but that sounds awful, doesn't it? I don't mean it like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. What would Kenneth Williams say? Well, I don't know. What would Kenneth Williams say? Mm, yes, that's a very good one. Wouldn't you agree, Matron? See, the thing is, like, even though I've had a couple of gins, I can still hit the right button. Yes, very good. <laughs> As the actress said to the bishop. Yes. Um, okay, well, have we got anything else to say about Humongous before this goes completely off the rails? No. <laughs> no. 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 Okay. I stand by my opinion. I don't care for it. don't think it's very particularly well made. I mean, it's well made, but it's just uh, too little too late. And it's not a good rep- representation of your penis. No, it's not. Mm. I'm, I'm disappointed. Well, not mm. burnt and crispy and a little bit. <coughs> mm. No? Well, I do like to set it on fire every now and then. It's, it's kind of a therapeutic. <laughs> this is getting too weird for me now. I need to go home. <laughs> it's not that kind of burning sensation that I want to talk about. Okay, well, how about you, Nathan? Um, a five out of ten. What, <laughs> what are we for talking the movie? about now? Just, Sorry? Five and what out of ten give, for the movie. And what 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 would you give uh, Joseph out of ten? Would you give him one? God. Zero out of ten. Oh. Zero out of ten. It's gone to the dogs. Well, this is, this is my final parting shot. Mm-hmm. I say this podcast has gone to the dogs, which is gonna be <laughs> yes. as good as humongous um reference yes. you can get really, isn't it? Yes. Oh yeah. Now, wait a minute. Wasn't wasn't Humongous released as Dog Island somewhere else? In it Sweden. was. I'm looking at um, Is It Uncut magazine issue 14, and uh, one of the video covers is co- uh, called Dog Island. It's the same yeah, sleeve is, as the DVD with the you might crib. Not get uncut um, magazine in America. That is not actually a porn magazine. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Is It Uncut people, is a worldwide a, um, video weirdness magazine. It's a UK oh. magazine 
for uh, just weird and obscure uh, movies from around the world. And I, I'm not sure. I think it's Dutch, uh, the video. It's, and it's called you know, Dog Nathan Eye. made a Nathan made a good point when we watched Humongous. I think he said that the movie would have actually been better if they were chased around by a bunch of rabid dogs. And I kind of agree with that. Um, I'm not sure. I don't f- see. I don't find dogs that scary. I mean, there was that film a few years ago um, where there was people on an island chased by dogs. It was in, it was Wes Craven presents. Um, oh yeah, with, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, I can't think of the title. The brood. The brood? No, the, the breed. The breed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wasn't too particularly well made. No, I just I just don't find dogs scary, so it wouldn't oh. have worked for me personally. Hmm. Why didn't the killer carry on barking? That's what I want to know. Yes. Because yeah. mm. the killer starts barking. Well, you know, actually, never actually hear the killer bark, really, do you? You hear him go... <laughs> That's pretty much all he does. Yeah. And also, because uh, in, in it, it says the, they say that he's suffering from a, a condition, isn't it? Which is the... And I can't pronounce this, but it's um, it's acromegaly, whatever that is. It's a chronic metabolic disorder when there's too much growth. So maybe that's affected you, uh, Joseph. Joseph, do you think? yeah. Yes. Thank you. Well, we don't know. We can't see. <laughs> Mine looks like there. a baked potato, by the way. Does it? Oh, oh with, with oh. a fried egg on oh. top. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you only, you only date ladies who've got um, quite um, accommodating... Uh, I won't go there. <laughs> oh, well. I'll go everywhere else. But um, <laughs> okay, well, on that bombshell, I think it's probably time we um, we ended it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's just gone. It's over. It's gone to the dogs. Okay, well, thank you for joining <laughs> us. And um, next time, hopefully, we'll be more sober. But who knows? Because it'll be our Christmas show, mm-hmm. so it could be full of ho um, ho homicide. Ho ho I'm homicide. Go- well, I'm I'm going to sing Wham's Last Christmas as the intro next week. Oh yeah, okay. Well, that yeah. sounds good. It will be our Christmas um, show, so um, there may be a few drinks. I don't know. Uh, who knows? It, it, you know. Hopefully, it will go. Around. And also, I'm off to actually next um, next Friday night. I'm going to go and see Christmas Evil on the big screen. Does that so, have a Q and A with the director as well? No, no. It's that, that's no. showing in Bristol rather than London. That was um, that's um, last because la- yeah, last week in London they had a Q and A. They had Christmas Evil and a Q and A with the director whose name I can't remember, but Kim Newman was doing the um, yeah the comparing. Lewis Jackson, Jackson. Lewis Jackson, that's it, yeah. That's the one, yes. So, um, but yes, well, we'll be doing... Um, well, next time, we are going to be doing... Uh, Joseph, do you want to tell us what we're going to be doing? Uh, it is an all-Christmas-themed episode. Uh, we will have our top three moments from holiday films. Uh, not not particularly Christmas, but holiday themes in general, since it is a holiday. And we will be covering uh, The Big Boy, uh, my favourite film, Black Christmas. So... Stay tuned for that. Indeed, yes. So we're on to one of the big boys, aren't we? So um, we'll see what comes off. So um, <laughs> I'm not well, that kind of doctor. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, throw it in the middle. Oh yeah. dear, I've, I've pressed the wrong button. Hold on. I told you it's slider radio. But, um, no, I, I, the moment's gone, isn't it? Yes, yes the moment has gone. Yeah. Excellent. Tried- well done, Nathan. <laughs> It care. is a little bit rickety, Doctor. Is it? Yes, but of course it's fairly easy to get it up. It's getting it to stay up. That's what counts. <laughs> yes. And Joseph will know. I hear that every so. day of my life. <laughs> right, well, thank you for joining us. Um, and hopefully um, you'll have a sober and happy or not very sober um, uh, week. And we will see you for some Christmas celebrations next time. So thank you for joining us. Goodbye, one and all. Bye. Bye. Uh, they don't sound very happy, do they? But yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Excellent. Well done, Nathan. Uh, well, it seems a little bit rickety, Doctor. Is it? Sorry, I pressed yes, the wrong of course, button. it's fairly easy to get it up. It's getting <laughs> it to stay up. That's what counts. <laughs>
got him, Sandy. It's okay. He's dead. <laughs> 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 <laughs>